I don't think some of them understood what you said because some of them are not commissioners. <laughs> and the pictures are up there. Good morning. We will call this meeting to order. Before I start the meeting, I would like to call roll. Um, District 1, Commissioner uh, Henry Mitchell III. President accounted for. Okay, District 2 and Vice Chairman uh, Robinson, Kelly Robinson. Present. Okay, District 3, Commissioner Carthen. I hear a lot of background noise. I ask that you all please mute your, your mic. There you go. Thank you. District 3, uh, Commissioner Commissioner Carthen. Okay. Commissioner Carthen, can you hear me? Okay, I'll I'll move on to District 4, Commissioner Ann Jones Guider. Present. Okay. And I saw Commissioner Carthen earlier. She might have dropped off, um, and I'm sure she'll oh, okay. there you are. Okay. Okay, thank you. So we have all our commissioners present and accounted for. Good morning again, Board of Commissioners and the citizens of Douglas County. We will call this July 20th, 2020 work yes, session to order. And do please, please, my, please mute all your camera. I mean, your, your, uh, your microphones, please, if you are not speaking, I ask that you mute all your microphones. This is the first time for us today to allow all our citizens to come in and explain uh, speak, and I'm quite sure it will go quite seamlessly. All right, I'm going to start again. Due to the continuation of the coronavirus pandemic and the latest increase in the spread of this virus in the community, today's meeting is being conducted with the use of virtual technology under the Georgia's Open Meetings Act. For, for obvious reasons, it is important for all of us to remain vigilant. With washing our hands, wearing a mask is highly recommended, and watching your social distancing as we uh, unify to sustain our health and protect ourselves and others until a vaccine is developed. Board of Commissioners, this morning before we start our work session, I would like to take a moment to highlight two mon monumental uh, uh, African-American heroes and civil rights icons who died this past weekend. We had Honorable Congressman John Lewis, who served 17 terms in the U.S. House of Representatives a representative serving since 1987. He was also the Dean of the Georgia Congressional Delegation. In addition, the Honorable Congressman John Lewis was a Lion King of the Civil Rights Movement. And he often stated, if you get in trouble, let it be good trouble. And he said, if we get it right in America, then we can serve as a model for the rest of the world. Upon receiving the news of Congressman John Lewis's death on Saturday, Please note, Board of Commissioners, the flags were lowered at half-mast at the courthouse, and I thank our Director Price for doing so, and the flags will remain lowered until Congressman Lewis' internment. Additionally, we have Minister Cordy Tadell Vivian, better known as C.T. Vivian, was a close friend and lieutenant of Dr. Martin Luther King during the Civil Rights Movement. Minister C.T. Vivian is considered one of the greatest greatest preachers who ever has lived on this universe. His method for addressing civil rights uh, and matters was, was mounted on the wings of nonviolence. Uh, Board of Commissioners, he remembered, uh, uh, C.T. Vivian will be remembered for his long, lifelong uh, work to free America from racism, hate, and violence. Board of Commissioners, elected officials, appointed officials, department leaders, and Douglas County citizens, I ask that if you would just please join me in a moment of, of silence as we recognize these two significant American heroes. Again, the Honorable Congressman John Lewis and Minister C.T. Vivian. If you could just join me in a moment of silence with your head bowed.
thank you, Board of Commissioners and the citizens of Douglas County. May these two great men rest in peace. This morning, Board of Commissioners, we have a public comment, and I wanted to make it uh, clear that we are excited to have our citizens here. We, we have I've been anxious to listen to and hear from you directly, and we found a way, certainly with our technology director, Russ Martin, and our communications director, Rick Martin, uh, they both worked in tandem with their individual teams to make this moment possible, and I appreciate all the things that they've done today to make this day possible. Um, certainly this morning, public comment allows the Board of Commissioners the opportunity to listen to the public and take concerns on the advisements. Citizens, every citizen's voice matters, and since the onset of the pandemic, uh, our citizens were encouraged to contact the dis their district commissioners, our county administrator, Mark Teal, and myself via email. And I appreciate your willingness to adjust to the temporary model for communicating your concerns. Uh, with that being said, um, also, clerk, I would like you, before I go any further, to please explain our process going forward as it pertains to the uh, our new virtual process for our citizens to chime in and respond. It's been three months, and it is time for their voices to be heard, and I'm so honored that our communications director and our uh, technology director both made this possible. Uh, clerk, would you please read our process going forward? Yes, ma'am. And... Um what we did was we gave the citizens a opportunity to register to speak this morning and for tomorrow for our public hearings. Um, we The registration deadline was at 12 noon on Friday. However, we did have some people sign in after that, which we allowed due to this. This is our first time, so people were not aware. So we did give a lot of leeway um, up until this morning, actually. Um, but in the future, um, the deadline to register for public comment will be on Fridays at noon prior to the next week's meeting. So for the next work session of August 3rd, the deadline to register to speak will be July 31st at noon. Um, so if, if everyone could just adhere to that as, as closely as possible. Um, and so uh, first off, I want to say we apologize for any problems that may occur ahead of time. This is our first time doing this. Um, we ask that you keep your phone muted if you're, if you're conferenced in on a line, or if you're on Teams, please mute your video and mic until your name is called. Uh, if you're not sure how to do that, um, you just hover your mouse, you know, inside the screen and some icons will pop up and you just click on the camera button or the mute button and that's in the same way to take it off. <clears throat> uh, we ask that you keep your, um, well, I already said that. Uh, we, when you're called on to speak, please state your name and address. Please keep your comments under three minutes. Um, the clerk will notify you when your time is up to wrap up your comments. Uh, once public comment is over, if you choose to remain in the meeting, you're welcome to do so, but just please, again, mute your phones and your cameras um, throughout the meeting. Uh, if you wish to leave the virtual meeting, you may continue viewing the meeting on live web stream on DCTV23 Facebook's page. Um, and I guess that's pretty much it. So, Chairman, when you're ready for the public comment, I will call each person one by one and let them give their comments. Thank you so much, uh, Clerk Watson. Today, we have a total of 18 citizens who signed up prior to the publicized deadline. And of course, well, we had 15 and three this morning, which I made an exception because this is our first time uh, rolling this process out. So thank you so much for bearing with us. Uh, each citizen, you will be allowed, a th allowed three minutes and I ask that you be cognizant of your time. Certainly when you hear the buzzer and you may not hear, hear it, but the clerk will chime in and remind you that you need to wrap it up. And I ask that you be respectful for others that are waiting behind you to come on and speak. It's only fair that we do so. Uh, today, I ask that your uh, concerns be stated in a civil manner with the understanding there will be no campaigning or personal attacks on elected officials or on individual citizens. Uh, as Lisa mentioned, today we are using the Microsoft Teams, Teams virtual technology, and I ask our citizens when the clerk uh, call your name, please unmute your computer and, uh, well, should I say your computer microphone and turn on your camera. And for the record, please restate your name and provide your address prior to <coughs> stating your comments. Again, be mi mindful. Uh, we welcome your comments this morning. Certainly this is not a Q&A session for the Board of Commissioners. 
and we're excited that you are here, and we're excited that technology has allowed us to do this uh, to, for this moment to come. With that being uh, said, clerk, please proceed with announcing the first citizen's name and certainly their topic. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, again, um, as I call your name, you may begin to speak, and I apologize up front if I mispronounce your name. Just please restate your name and correct me. Um, the first name is James Alprende. If you could unmute and turn your mic off, and you can maybe begin speaking. Good morning, commissioners. My name is James Oparnde. I live at 7234 Cedar Forest Drive. I'm an 11th grade student at Douglas County High School. I would like to request that you look into changing the name of the county from Douglas County to Douglas County with a double S to be named for Frederick Douglas instead of the yeah, abhorrent Stephen A. Douglas. I would also like to explain some points. According to the marker in front of the Old Courthouse Museum, the county is named after 19th century politician Stephen A. Douglas. He was not so honorable of a man and definitely not honorable enough to have this county named for him. Rather than abolition, Stephen A. Douglas supported popular sovereignty, the idea that individual states should vote on if they would uphold slavery. This idea was executed into law in the Compromise of 1850. The legislation which Stephen A. Douglas was a strong advocate for. Can't hear him. Can, can you, Lisa, have him speak up and his camera is not on either. I don't see his camera. Oh, I'm calling in through the conference line, so. Well, okay, no problem. But if you could speak up for us, thank you. Oh, okay. So, should I start all over? Just, yeah, just your last sentence for it, please, so we can hear you. Okay. Um, According to the marker in front of the Old Courthouse Museum, the county is named after 19th century politician Stephen A. Douglas. He was not so honorable of a man, and definitely not honorable enough to have this county named for him. Rather than abolition, Douglas supported popular sovereignty. The idea that individual states should vote on if they would uphold slavery. The idea was executed into law in the Compromise of 1850, the legislation which Stephen A. Douglas was a strong advocate for. He was in opposition to the Wilmot Proviso in 1846, which would have ended slavery in territories acquired in, from Mexico. There are damages to having the county named after Stephen A. Douglas. It's a positive portrayal of a dishonorable man who did not care for black lives. This is not necessarily righteous, considering that this county has a large black population. Schools such as Douglas County High School bear the name of the county. Athletes such as myself have to honor Stephen A. Douglas by wearing his name across our chests. Overall, this decreases the reason for pride in the county. However, naming the county after Frederick Douglass would be a positive move forward for the county. He is an example of an intelligent black man who works to progress society. Well, nobody can take that action in front of the courthouse. He was, he was born into slavery, but still conquered the systematic oppression he faced from birth and became one of the most important men in history. He worked with Abraham Lincoln to write and issue the Emancipation Proclamation. He also fought for human rights by speaking at the Seneca, Seneca Falls Convention, 172 years from this day, in fact. And he also fought for suffrage rights for women. This move would make the spirit of Douglas County one that is proud of black history and would help this great county be a beacon of light in the state of Georgia and possibly the entire country. My surprise, there are neighborhoods and schools named after, named after Frederick Douglass, but there are no cities or counties named for him. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you so much. Our clerk, are you still there so you can call the next name? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, the next name is, and I apologize for the mispronunciation, uh, Pastor Mammon. Are you on the line? Chairman, I guess if they don't, um, if they're not on the line, maybe move their names to the end and re try to recall them at the end. Agreed. Okay. You're not going to answer no questions. It's just a comment. Right. 
Um, the next name is uh, Joel Brock, and he is here to speak regarding the Confederate monument. Mr. Brock, are you on the line? I am on the line. I got a video as well. My name is Joel Brock, Winston, Georgia, 30187. I came to speak about the Confederate monuments. Good morning, commissioners. In light of the Black Lives Matter movement, which is fighting against systemic racism across our country, it's time to remove the Confederate statue outside the courthouse. In actuality, it's long overdue. We should honor the brave men and women who fought for our country, not against it like the Confederate traitors did. These statues and monuments were put in the counties and municipalities during the early 20th century by an organization called United Daughters of the Confederacy to serve as a reminder to African Americans that white supremacy still reigns. It's no coincidence where they placed them in front of courthouses. Other cities and counties are acting. Connors just removed their statue June 30th. The cab removed theirs a couple of weeks back. And the Henry County Board of Commissioners just passed an ordinance to remove their Confederate statue earlier this month. The political will is there. The citizens overwhelmingly support removal. And the Douglas County Board of Commissioners Democratic majority has the political capital as each of you have won overwhelming margins in your respective elections. We are a majority minority county. And this monument to the Confederacy is just dis plain disrespectful to our citizens. We can't wait for the state legislature. They won't reconvene until next January. Even Robert E. Lee was opposed to these monuments. Here's what he said in 1869 about a proposed uh, Gettysburg Memorial. I think it's wiser not to keep open the sores of war, but to follow the examples of those nations who endeavor to obliterate the marks of civil strife, to commit to oblivion, oblivion the feelings endangered. So, this is what I believe. I believe it's time for these statues to uh, go, and I hope the commissioners will act. I also like to say, I know it doesn't get much praise, but DCTV23 does a great job of providing transparency. TJ, you do a great job. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Um, okay, our next comment is for, from Alex Ayers. Are you on the phone? Are you on the line? I'm on the line. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. My name is Alex Ayers, uh, Villa Rica 30180. I'm calling in to make a statement in favor of moving the Confederate monument in front of Douglas County Courthouse. In doing genealogy research, I discovered last year that I actually have relatives who fought in the Confederacy. I also had a relative who fought in the Union and died at Andersonville. Also last year, there was a bill signed to protect Confederate monuments. It was signed next door to a plantation built by slaves on stolen Cherokee land, and the Civil War wasn't even mentioned during signature. The bill says a monument can't be moved to a museum, and we should ask why. If this statue should remain to help us learn from our history, then surely it's better off in a museum where people don't just drive by it, where people can actually see who the statue is for and pause to reflect in the wrongdoings of our past and how far we've come. If we should leave it there because you can't erase history, it's too late for that. History was rewritten during Reconstruction by the vanquished, not the victor. People all over the country are waking up and learning that the whitewashed history taught to us was misleading, glossed over, and sugar-coated, that the truth of how devastating slavery really was was omitted. We continue to unlearn. It's time to get honest. Change starts by honest reflection and acknowledgement. Glorifying the Confederate cause does not help this country heal. I have Confederate ancestors, but that is not my proud heritage. Slavery was the cornerstone of the Confederacy and there's no way around it. For people who say they support the symbols out of a pride for their history and heritage, but say they're not racist, you need to take ownership of the fact that racist extremists um, like Dylan Roof and James Alex Fields, they co-opted these symbols to mean white pride and used them to incite hatred and murder in the name of white supremacy. True freedom means freedom from living in fear. These symbols simply have too much terror wrapped up in their history, terror against American citizens. We here in Douglas County, with two S's, by the way, like the first speaker said, for the original intended name Frederick Douglas, should show that we are ready to move forward together. This is just the beginning, the first baby step in righting wrongs, but we are going to have to do some serious re-education, 
to have a continuous, open, peaceful dialogue. There's so many intertwined issues to unravel, but we owe it to future generations to have these difficult discussions. And we can do even better than just moving this statue, besides renaming our county back to its original intended name. In just a few days on July 24th, it will be the 135th anniversary of the only recorded lynching in Douglas County. On July 24th, 1885, a man named Peter Stamps was lynched by a mob of 500 men, citizens of Douglasville, men with children and families. He was found the next day hanging from the Bowden Street Railroad Bridge, and I think that Bowden Street at Highway 78 is a fine place for a historical marker to commemorate this tragedy and truly confront our collective past and make a proclamation of inclusion and unity ongoing to honor the memory of Peter Stamps. Thank you. I appreciate this time. Thank you, Ms. Ayer. Um, our next, our next um, citizen will be Rodney Butler. Mr. Butler, are you on the line? Okay, I guess we'll go on to our next one. Ms. Adrian Barry. Are you on the line? I am. I'm trying to get my there, there, you there you are. Good morning. Good morning. Adrian Baird, Olivia Spring, 30122. Um, the people of Georgia, having dissolved their political connection with the United States of America, the government me, of the United States of America, present their cause to their Confederate state and the world, their, their causes leading to separation. We have had numerous complaints over the last 10 years over the with the subject in reference to African slavery. Those are, paraphrase, the first two lines of Georgia's Declaration of Succession that was entered in January 1869, 1861. The reality is that the Confederacy and Confederate monuments are an homage to slavery. It is the homage to the enslavement and the dehumanization and the degradation of my ancestors. Those ancestors that were brought here on mobile concentration camps known as slave ships. These monuments were dedicated here in Douglasville in 1914 by the United Daughters of the Confederacy. During that time, they had a very pro-propaganda slavery, um, painting slavery in a, a good light. During that time, their historian, Mary Lewis Rutherford, stated in several speeches that she gave from 1911 to 1916, where she stated, had blacks benefited from freedom, unhesitatingly, no. They also provided pro-KKK books to children in 1914, the same year that they dedicated this monument here in Douglasville. They also had their president, Mrs. James A. Rosenville, who stated that the Southern race had a right to do everything in their power to show their supremacy in their own land. That was in the 1900s. And as recent as August 2018, their website stated that slaves were for the most part faithful and ready and willing to serve their masters. These monuments, these um, gifts, as they were called, were not gifts. They were points of propaganda. They are disrespectful, they are hurtful, and they are harmful to those people that look like me that are proud citizens of this county and of this region. I ask that you remove these monuments. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Berry. Uh, we'll go on to our next citizen, Mona Matthews. Are you on the line, Ms. Matthews? Uh, yes, I am. I'm turning on my, my mic now. Uh, my name is Mona Matthews. I live at 196 Lock Highland Drive. First, I want to thank Chairperson Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones and other members of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners for providing this opportunity for me to speak in support of removing 
the Confederate monument located at the DC courthouse. As background, I've been a resident of Douglasville for 30 years. Prior to that, I grew up in the 50s and the 60s in downtown Atlanta. My childhood home was located on Monroe Drive. We often rode the bus because we didn't have a car, and I have a clear memory of the sign place above the front window of that bus that read colors in the back. As I got older, I came to learn that that sign was not pointing out where individuals could sit, but rather was a symbol and a daily reminder to our black and brown residents that the knee of subjugation still remained on their neck. I'll give three reasons why I believe the statue needs to be removed. One, it's way past time. The killing of George Floyd, Amon Avery, and Breonna Taylor have removed the blinders of complacency worn by too many whites. We are way past the point to be complacent. LeVar Stoney, mayor of Richmond, Virginia, summed it up when he said, you know, it's time to move beyond the lost cause and let's embrace the righteous cause. Second reason, symbols of racism should not be allowed in public places. I borrow a statement from Eugene Robinson, a writer for the Washington Post who grew up in the South to make this point. We put statues in places of honor to depict our heroes and our values. Overt racism is not an idea to honor. And the final reason that I will uh, mention today, a courthouse should serve as a symbol where those who enter should expect fair and just treatment. Instead, what they see is a symbol honoring those who fought a war to deny human beings, not just fair and just treatment, but recognition of their own humanity. We still have a lot of work to do to create a more just community. Removing this statue is one small step we can take to right this 400 year wrong. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Matthews. <clears throat> Our next citizen is Amy McCoy. Ms. McCoy, are you on the line? Yes, good morning. Alex Ayers. Can you hear me? Is okay? now exiting. No, oh, okay. Um, yes, Amy McCoy at 3180 Ashton Old Road, um, Douglasville 30135. I'm asking that the statue of the courthouse be removed from the public space. As a business owner, I have to do business at the courthouse regularly. And as a homeowner, I'm invested in this county. I understand some members of the community value it as a symbol of historic value, and I care about how you feel. However, how I feel is equally important. Nonetheless, the statue should be removed from or moved to a museum or maybe to the Confederate cemetery so that those that want to celebrate their heritage can do so at their leisure. How can we ask for biz, big business to invest in our county if we're stuck in old town mindsets that possess divisive undertones? It celebrates an era in our history where men declared war on, on other Americans to retain state rights to enslave other human beings. This statue represents that era. So the question is why in 2020, do we have a statue in front of a taxpayer funded courthouse of people who committed treason, which is which ignited which is after the cornerstone speech, willing to kill their fellow Americans to support the commerce of slave trafficking. We must move beyond the tr horrific tragedy caused over 155 years ago. We must welcome and embrace the diversity our county has grown to. And this statue does not reflect our county and the values that have been instilled with new leadership. We must move past the old Confederacy. We need to welcome a new generation of residents and not be encumbered by the racist past of the Confederacy. I ask that the statue be removed. Thank you, Ms. McCoy. Thank you, Ms. McCoy. Our next Our citizen is uh, LaShawn Danley. Ms. Stanley, are you on the line? Okay, she must not be here. Let's go to the next one. Is uh, Mr. Henry Mitchell the fourth? Are you on the line? Uh, let's try Mr. Brandon Pinamon. 
Are you on the line? Yes, Brandon Penniman here. Okay. okay. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right, awesome, awesome. Well, um, I understand that I have only three minutes, and I also understand that time is of the essence, and that actually segues perfectly into what I'm speaking on today, which is time. I'm here to speak in favor of the removal of the Confederate statues, and I think that the time is now. Time is an important factor in our lives, and it's one of the most controlling factors of in, our, in our lives. It's the, one of the only things that we can't get back is time. And a wise man once said that a dream too long delayed is a dream denied. And that comes from Martin Luther King. He said a dream too long delayed is a dream denied. And America, since its inception, has dreamed of creating a nation that represented all people, that gave everybody a chance to have life, liberty, freedom, and the pursuit of happiness. So today, as John Lewis said, I am here to cause some good trouble, to bring up a subject that needs to be discussed, and that's the removal of the Confederate statues. These Confederate statues, as many people have already mentioned, have multiple roots of division. And if we want to grow as a community, we must remove these roots of evil. The statue represents a time when people went against our country and they were fighting for state rights. One of the state rights that the Confederacy was fighting for was the right to own slaves as property. As John Lewis also said, today we don't want our freedom gradually. Today we want it now. And so I come before you commissioners asking each of you personally to make a stance, to make a decision, to draw a line in the, stand, in the sand and say where you stand. No, we may not be able to get it done legislatively because um, they are out of session until the beginning of next year, but you as commissioners and as leaders of this community, you can make a stance. You can make a statement. And I am asking you the direct question today. Are you willing to make the stance for righteousness and equality in our community? I believe the first step to making that stance to show that you truly are for that cause is to write a resolution to have this statue removed. You have the power as commissioners to write a resolution to have this statue removed. We would like for you to write that resolution and we would like for you to stand on that point. Whether the legislative office and the Congress will allow it or not, we are asking you as leaders in our community to make a stance and make a statement on where you stand in regards to the conversation of equality, justice, and also statues that represent inequality and the lack of justice. Um, this is all the time that I have. I appreciate you guys for giving us as community members an opportunity to speak. And I thank you for the diligent work that you are continuing to do for Douglas County. And as we grow progressively, I pray that um, we will be able to remove these statues and be able to move forward together as one community united under love, liberty, nonviolence, peace, and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Penniman. Our next citizen will be uh, Tony Montcalm. Are you on the line? I am, thank you. Okay. Um, I too uh, came to address uh, the matter of the statue. My name is Anthony Montcalm. I live at 6790 John West Road in Winston. Um, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, thank you again for this opportunity. My great grandfather was Lieutenant Charles Marion Polk of the Confederate Army. I am a son of the Confederacy and I was raised in the myth of the lost cause. And I've come to ask you as well to please remove this statue. This is not about erasing history. I wish it were so easy. This is about choosing what aspects of our past we want to celebrate. The stain of slavery is indelible. And a monument to secession and chattel slavery does not belong in front of a building that represents all our residents. Ostensibly, that statue honors our county's Confederate dead, like my great grandfather. But our county wasn't even chartered until 1870. It commemorates the dead of a county that did not even exist. 
That statue is about continuing a centuries-long legacy of oppression and disenfranchisement. I wanted to speak today because I'm just the sort of person who should be most involved in preserving that statue. And even I realize it needs to go. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Montcalm. Our next citizen is Cesar Gonzalez. Mr. Gonzalez, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Okay, my name is Cesar Gonzalez. I have an ancestral history connection to the uh, Douglas County being uh, from of Arawak uh, Native American descent. My question is, I don't, I've asked this question to a number of people. I've said, how does removing this monument in, improve the quality of life of the people in this county? And no one seems to be able to answer that question. It's a monument of the war casualties of the families that some still live in this county. And it represents, of course, their losses. I don't see its removal having any relevancy to the issues concerning the urban community in this county at all. It's purely symbolic. We remove a statue. I see, and this will never end. It'll be first removing this monument, then it will probably be who knows what, uh, digging up the soil that a Confederate soldier might have walked on at one point in time. It's just, it's just a never ending process process of trying to appease a faction while disenfranchising other people. You know, this county, this board has more important issues to concern itself with. Okay, and it's, this is nothing more to try to control a narrative of history through rewriting it. I don't see any benefit to this at all. If I was to suggest anything, I would say give equal footing, equal billing to each of the members of the community rather than disenfranchising one for the appeasement of, of another. Put another statue up there. Put the statue of Martin Luther King. How about something that represents the Native American community, which I'm a part of? You know, it's just this, this, this whole thing about engaging the thought police to combat racism, rewriting history. It's just, it's foolhardy and it's distracting at best. You're, you're alienating one community to appease another and it's not building any bridges between communities so that we can work together. The sense of one entitled over the other, I'm reminded of uh, a passage in George Orwell's uh, book, Animal Farm, where it says all animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. I look at this today. I look at these, these uh, debates today about racism and everything, and I'm, I'm, I'm a member of the, I'm a, considered a brown person, but I don't see any benefit into labeling one community as more noble than the other, and then saying, well, we all have to get along and we all represent each other. No, we don't. So again, I don't see any benefit to removing this monument other than to symbolically appease one group at the expense of another. And that's my statement. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Uh, our next citizen is Triana James. Ms. James, are you on the line? I am. I'm here. Okay, you may begin if you can restate your name and address. Triana Arnold James, Villarico 30134. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Chair and all the commissioners for allowing us this opportunity to speak before you. Um, and I want to say that the words in the, inside the courthouse says, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. The Confederacy was built on slavery during a terrible time in history in the United States, of the United States. 
The Confederacy represents the continuation of oppression of black and brown people. It's time for us to remove, remove symbols that annotate oppression and suppression of people and start to build a bridge that represents diversity. This is all of our land. And I, as a veteran, represent that land. And we will not be silent anymore. The issues that we're facing today have plagued people of color, communities for years, police shootings, gun violence, drive-by shootings, killings of our young men and women, and yet nothing has been done about it. I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. My message to those that are in office and those that are elected, if you're not willing to represent your children in a diverse manner, then step down or step aside. We are tired of elected officials straddling the fence and sitting on their hands. We're tired of working on you. We're tired of habitat. We're demanding that the statues be removed. The flag the flag be removed, removed from the point of the lawn and the rename and the Bill Art Elementary School. Bill, Bill Art wasn't even his real, his real name. His name was Charles Smith. Smith. And he is and not he even is from, from Douglas County, County. 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 and he supported the Confederacy. Bill Art was well known in the Southern Voice during a war time. Smith was a wife of at least 30 pieces where he had hit the union for policy and service. I couldn't hear anything she said because people wouldn't mute their microphone. You can't hear anything that I said. I was able I was to able hear. Um, um, some, some, there's some there's interference. Some I don't, I don't think, it's think it's someone's it's phone not being. Not being. Um, um, sometimes I think cell phones being close to clo too close to the computers may um, interfere. Um, so sorry about that, but does do any of the commissioners need uh, Ms. James to restate anything? So so no one heard me. Ms. James, yes, this is Chairman Jones. I heard you. Uh, all the board of commissioners, did you hear Ms. James by any chance? I want to make sure we heard her. Board of Commissioners. Reuben. Yeah. Madam Chair, you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. With, with technology, with, with technology I, I'm, I'm okay with I'm the okay suggested with process. The process. And even now, I've got feedback. I've got feedback. And okay. I wanted to hear that, but it grieved my spirit. I, I, I just checked out. I mean, I just couldn't hear because that, that feedback, it, it, that was rough right there. So I, I think to be honorable, uh, we want to get public comment and we want it to be accurate, but that distortion uh, wasn't fair. I know we're embracing new things. It's not like being in person, uh, but we need to make some degree of adjustment. So I'd like for her to repeat it over, Madam Chair, just for the record. But everybody has to turn off um, their, I mean, you know, back off, turn off your mute your phones. And um, I'm just asking, Madam Chair, it's your call, um, just to give honor because that, that, I mean, everybody wants to be heard and they want their three minutes of, you know, their moment. So I yield. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, Vice Chairman. Yes, uh, um, Mrs. Arnold, I would love for you to uh, restate your, uh, your your concern. Okay, let me make sure. Am I clear now? Can yeah. Yeah. Here? Yes, you are clear. I'm clear now. Okay, maybe it was my phone. Okay. Okay, thank I'm you. I'm sorry. Okay, so I can 
my three minutes back. Yes, yes. ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to try to hold my phone so that I think that's a little bit better. Okay. The words inside the courthouse says, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. The Confederacy was built on slavery during a terrible time in history of the United States. The Confederacy represents the continuation of oppression of black and brown people. It's time for us to remove symbols that annotates oppression and suppression of people and start to build a bridge that represents diversity. This is our land. I am a veteran of over 20 years and I serve this land and I refuse to be silent anymore. The issues that we're facing today have plagued people of color communities for years. Police shootings, gun violence, drive-bys, shootings, killings of our young men and women, and nothing has been done about it. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. My message to those that are in office and looking to get elected and those elected officials, if you're not willing to save our, diverse, our diversity for our children, I'm asking that you step down or step aside. We are tired of elected officials straddling the fence and sitting on their hands. We are tired of waiting. We are tired of hashtags. We are demanding that the statue, the flagpoles be removed from the courthouse lawn and the renaming of Bill Art Elementary School. Bill Art was not even his real name. His real name was Charles Henry Smith. He, he wasn't even from Douglas County and he supported the Confederacy. Bill Art became well known, a well-known Southern voice during the, during the war. Smith's wartime writings numbered at least 30 pieces where he attacked the Union for their policies and served to inspire the Confederacy. We cannot speak on equal justice in the courthouse and not have equal representation. But how long must we wait for equality, for justice? for equal protection under the law, for due process, equal representation. And just because I'm asserting my right doesn't mean that I'm trying to take away yours. It's not pie. We're demanding that you call the vote the, on the resolution written by um, Commissioner Carthan and vote to remove the statue, uh, the flagpoles, and the renaming of Bill Arp Elementary as well as uh, changing the name of the Highway 92 bypass to Frederick Douglass Boulevard. We're asking, you have the power. We're asking for you to do the right thing by the citizens of Douglas County. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. James. That was much clearer. We could understand that perfectly. Um, our next citizen is Ms. Wanda Sexton Almond. Are you on the line? I'm here. Okay, great. You may begin speaking. Uh, Mr. Johnson is going to speak for me. Okay, can you please give your uh, full name and address, please? Um, My name is Arthur Johnson. I stay at 1790 Hampton Pass, uh, zip 30134. Good morning, commissioners. Um, I'm here to talk briefly about a tower that has been put up in back of our house. And I've looked into it and I haven't been able to find out anything except for it was put up and the citizens in the community don't know anything about it. Um, they say it's an AT&T tower, and you've got three subdivisions within a quarter of a mile of this tower. And all I'm trying to find out is how was it put up, and why was it put up, and why wasn't the residents of these subdivisions notified about it? And what can we do about it right now? Because it seems like it's already been approved and no one knows anything about it. So if 
someone could give me some concrete information on it. I've been going around in a merry-go-round about this. And uh, I've talked with 80% of the residents in this area and no one seems to know nothing about it. So if someone could contact me with some pertinent information on this, I would appreciate it. And once again, thank you for this time that you've given me. Thank you, Mr. Johnston. Um, if you could email me with your uh, contact information, I can get someone to um, call you back with some information. My email is lwatson at co.douglas.ga.us. Okay, our next citizen is Miss Tiffany Jones. And I believe she's here to talk about the tower as well. Are you on the line, Ms. Jones? Good morning, I am. Can you hear me? Yes. Good morning. Uh, again, my name is Tiffany Jones. Uh, I am at 1795 Hampton Pass, Douglasville, Georgia. Uh, my concern is also in regards to uh, the tower that is going up. Um, one day I was literally just looking outside and I saw this big giant tower and I wondered what was happening. Uh, my neighbor and I um, saw some workers and we approached them and asked them about the tower. Uh, they did confirm that it was AT&T. Uh, he confirmed that it was at least 4G, but that it would probably be 5G. Uh, my concern with the AT&T cell tower is the amount of radiation that it gives off. Uh, we have uh, several members of our community uh, that are dealing with health issues, and uh, it, it is very concerning uh, that something that would be so detrimental to our health would be added so close to our homes. Upon further investigation, we did find out that the tower is located on the fire department property uh, in back of the uh, Sheriff's County uh, gun range, which is directly behind um, my neighbor's property and approximately uh, half a football field away uh, from my home uh, as well. Um, we definitely do need to know uh, if any research has been done uh, in regards to uh, the effects that this tower will have on uh, the members of the community health-wise. Um, and we'd also like to know uh, why, one, we weren't uh, informed that this was going to be placed so close to our homes. Uh, several calls have been made to various people, uh, as well as emails um, uh, have been uh, put in as well. Uh, so if someone could uh, let us know what steps we need to take uh, to, to stop this tower from going up. Currently, the antennas are not there, so we do still have some time. Um, but our health is at stake, and, and we're really not happy about it. And that's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Um, <clears throat> the same as I stated before, we'll try to get you some information out, okay? Thank you. Okay, um, that was the end of our list, but we're going to go back because I did see some people um, join in uh, while others were speaking. Um, is there a Pastor Mammon on the line? I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly. Okay, um, Mr. Rodney Butler, are you on the line? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you can begin speaking. Yes, ma'am. Be very quick. Uh, good morning, commissioners. Um, uh, I'm, you, I'm sorry. Can you restate your name and address for me? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it is uh, Rodney Butler, and I live at 6142 Arden Court uh, in, in Douglasville. And my concern this morning uh, is is the um, the Confederate monument, and, and also as well as as the uh, Bill Art. Uh, but since things have already been said about it, and I got on a little late because I didn't get all the information. Uh, I just simply just want to say that um, uh, as a, like others on this call, you know, I'm a veteran, combat veteran uh, of the Gulf War and of Iraq, Afghanistan. Uh, and I know a lot of people want to say that these monuments, that that monument, you know, represent a soldier um, from the Confederate, um, from the Confederate um, Army. And I would just like to say that to speak on behalf of, of, African-American and other 
uh, combat veterans or just soldiers, uh, military people uh, in general of color. Uh, we don't even recognize, we don't even see those, those monuments of those people as soldiers. They are traitors. They are no more than traitors. And every time we either pass by or have to see one of those uh, monuments in uh, a public square, uh, it is literally a slap in the face just for the commissioners or other people to turn around and tell us, you know, thank you for your service and to show gratitude uh, is very hypocritical to us. So on behalf of, of veterans, military veterans, co true combat veterans, uh, I would like to be on record as stating uh, that those monuments and the monuments as far as names of schools and roads uh, that anything that got to do with the Confederacy should be removed or taken down in Douglas County. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Butler. Um, we'll go on. I believe I saw Councilwoman Danley join. Are you there? Yes, ma'am. I am here. Thank you so much. Okay, you may go ahead. Yes, I am Councilwoman LaShawn Burr Danley. I reside at 6634. Young Court, Douglasville, Georgia, 30134. To Madam Commissioner um, Jackson Jones and to the other commissioners, thank you so much for allowing me to speak. I um, have been a resident of Douglas County for all my life, and I'm speaking in regards to the statue that is in front of the courthouse. I do understand that um, there are different sides as it relates to offenses. I do take the Confederate statue as uh, um, offensive to my African-American um, heritage. However, I do understand that others um, do recognize it as family history. I am for equality and most definitely in preserving our history. I would like to see Madam Mayor and the other commissioners take every step possible to remove the statue and look at other options of where it can be um, replaced or placed such as the museum so those are my comments thank you so much thank you um let's see our next one is let's try uh, mr henry mitchell the fourth again are you on the line yes ma'am i am okay you, you can begin how you doing uh, i'm henry mr the fourth also known as beanie my address is 2646 Dale Ridge Road, Douglasville, Georgia, 30135. And um, this is in regards to the Confederate monument. Uh, first off, I wanna thank all of the, the people who spoke um, the, to hear the diversity in removing the statue just brings joy to my heart, just to let me know that I'm not alone on this fight. And, um, I just want to just speak. I, I I was going to speak on a lot of the facts, but a lot of you gave a lot of facts. So I'll just focus on just the moral side. I understand we have um, laws, but some of our laws are just not moral. All right. So morally, the Confederate statue doesn't recognize or love on all people. Um, as most of uh, my constituents stated, um, it was a war against the United States of America. So they were the enemy of the United States of America, but we're promoting the enemy, which subliminally is underlining hate towards black people, because one of the laws they were fighting for is to keep slavery. Um, the Confederate statue standing in America is just like a Nazi statue or standing in Germany. It just doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? It's just not morally right for all people. Um, so it's definitely a, a stand that our county commissioners, Madam Chair, um, you guys definitely uh, morally just got to do the right thing. And the right thing is to take the steps to have the statue removed or replaced with a different statue that represents our people. Um, I hear a lot of our opposers saying we should have multiple statues up, but even having multiple statues up still separates us as people. It's kind of like we celebrate one side just with certain type of people and the other side celebrate the other side with other certain type of people. And that's just morally isn't right for our hearts. Um, I think we should all just focus on what God would have us to do. And God loves our people. 
So it's no reason for us to be separated amongst this county. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't even know that the Confederate statue actually stood up until about a month ago and when it was brought to my attention. And um, I just challenge those in position to to do the right thing for the people of Douglasville. You heard most of the our constituents talk from Douglasville, even those who are who have relatives who were who fought in the Confederate War. And let me say this. It was. For the Confederate um, people who actually fought in the Confederate War, um, it was a, a lot of courage for them to go against the United States, kind of like David and Goliath. But this time, God was not on the Confederate side. So I think it's time we choose God's side and just keep doing what we supposed to do when we're in our position. So morally, the Confederate statue definitely needs to be removed or replaced in the mu museum. Um, thank you for the time, and I love you all. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, Chairman, that concludes our citizens' uh, comments. Thank you so much, Clerk. Certainly, uh, everyone's comments will be taken under advisement, and certainly your comments were meaningful today and, and beneficial, and certainly left a lot of food for thought for our commissioners to certainly examine and, and, and move forward as we uh, certainly look at some issues related to uh, the monuments, uh, also the renaming of Douglas uh, County, and also uh, the uh, tower that was that was of much concern, the cell tower. So with that being said, Board of Commissioners, uh, we're going to move on to our next topic item. I would like, again, I thank our citizens for taking time out of their busy schedules to come in and to share their concerns with us this morning. Uh, we have a pres another presentation this morning, and I'm not sure I'm going to ask about the, the FY19 audit presentation. Is Director Hallman on, on the line? Um, Madam Chair, she's having technical issues right now, but this will be um, a presentation at the commission meeting tomorrow. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. So thank you so much, County Administrator. We're going to move on to our next uh, uh, update, or should I say presentation, would be the SPLOS update. And Mr. Terry Gable this morning, would you please uh, kick off with our update? And we're excited about uh, hearing this update because uh, it's been probably about a month now. So uh, you should go. Yes, ma'am. Um, well, good morning. And uh, I'll get my presentation up here in just a second. Um, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. It's Terry Gable with Atlas. And I'll be giving the... Uh, July SPLOS update um, for the next few minutes. Let me see if I can get it up. Okay. Um, Madam Chair, can you see that? Yes, good. We can see it, Terry. Okay. All yes. Right. Um, Those, yes. Thank you all. So this, I'll be reporting on the, uh, the May revenues and the work through the month of June, and we are in the fourth year of the program. Um, currently, we have invoiced out approximately $42 million in the program um, as of the end of July. Okay. Um, and I'll go through each program real quick and uh, give a, a quick breakdown. Fire and EMS, all the programs are doing well. Uh, we're, we're really starting to um, kick everything in the gear. Of course, fire is, uh, have, has already had a big accomplishment with the radio system. Um, and throughout, through the rest of this year, we'll be ordering equipment. And we also will be starting up one, uh, one more project with fire. And I'll go through these real quickly in just a second, just kick, kind of give an overview uh, of each one as we go through it. So we're, we spent approximately about $20 million through June and, and the fire and EMS. Uh, transportation, uh, we've currently invoiced out $14.3 million. Uh, we've, again, uh, transportation's got a lot coming up this year. Uh, we're, a lot of it will be let. Um, there's already a couple things have already been let and we're going to be letting a lot more as we Rock move uh, into the fall of the year. So we're looking forward Is to that getting the transportation project started. Uh, and we'll also be getting some of the sidewalk projects that I know we've been looking forward to also on the way. And I'll, again, I'll go Sean through those. Bird-Danley is now uh, exiting. I'll go through those here in just a second. Parks and Rec, uh, this, is, this ended up being their 
uh, their busiest year, as most of you have heard in, in the previous reports, uh, with several projects ongoing, uh, all of them doing good. Um, and I'll uh, brief you just uh, a little more detail with those in just a minute. So we're right at about uh, $5.1 million for Parks and Rec. Now to get into some of the revenue numbers. Um, so the May uh, revenues came in at 2.29 million and I was pleasantly surprised of, um, as I'm sure most of you uh, were, um, don't know exactly what's driving that, but I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed that we that it continues um, through the rest of the SPLOS program uh, and hopefully it'll, things will start settling down and we'll see some even higher numbers. Uh, but comparing that to um, the original projection, um, for um, that was set to, uh, when the program started, it was approximately two hundred eleven thousand dollars over the projection. So just a good month. Um, and, and looking at it compared to our uh, graph that we we look at each month, uh, that the the flat bar is set by the projections, and we've done well since last May. And if you compare even uh, the May revenues for for twenty twenty. It's even slightly above uh, the main number for last year. So uh, we've had a couple spikes in it throughout the, the last 12 to 18 months. And, and obviously this, this may will be, um, be one of the higher ones. So good news there. Let's, um, uh, let's hope the e economy can hold out and get through this pandemic and we'll continue to do, do good with our numbers. So looking at the program overall, uh, reporting on uh, the first three full years, and then we're just slightly into year four. Uh, we're just just over 80, 80 million dollars that have been collected. Uh, and if you compare that total number to the projection, uh, we're right at 3.5 million dollars. That's over. These are just over projections, um, but it's a good sign that the uh, the program at this point is is, is solid. So with that, just real quick though, with our bond obligations. Uh, we've got the new numbers uh, have been posted. Um, this will be for the, the dates do not change. This will be made. The first payment will be made October 1st, $509,000. April 1st of 2021 will be uh, the larger payment of the two and it's $16.8 million for a total of $17.3 million. Uh, the, uh, the good news is as we progress through this, this program, next year will be the last payment um, in year five, it will be much smaller than what we've been experiencing and trying to in, in tracking the, the revenue so close to um, making sure we have that number for the, the bond payback. Uh, next year, it's slightly under $5 million, so it won't be impacting our revenue uh, nearly as much as we've experienced over the last couple of years in, in making these large payments. So good news there, um, and hopefully we'll get through in uh, next few months and be able to have the reserves to uh, to make our payments. So with, with that said, I'll move um, real quick into some project updates. Um, the countywide digital radio system, as we've, we've been reporting, uh, is nearing completion. Uh, they're on schedule to complete, um, compl uh, complete the project by the end of the month. They finished up the BDA at the jail uh, last week. They're still setting some um, some of the sirens throughout the county. Uh, that should be uh, nearing completion by the end of July. And they'll be working towards your final, Motor Road will be working towards your final invoice um, and final acceptance uh, of the project. So in, in getting feedback from the chief and from Jay Nix with Motorola, uh, the 95% coverage was, um, was met and uh, some hot spots around the county uh, were, were even higher than that. So if, uh, again, just feedback from the chief and some other folks that I think they're very pleased with where we're at with it uh, and looking forward to, uh, to wrapping everything up and getting it completely done. So with that, uh, real quick with some equipment for the chief, uh, we're advertising for an ambulance in 2020. Uh, that's, they're in the process of doing that and we'll get that in the works um, and get it out and, and select a vendor for, for the ambulance. Uh, the fire truck, uh, over the last couple of months, uh, the chief and him have selected a vendor for the fire truck and uh, the board has already approved that. What we're waiting on, the chief's waiting on now is a PO to finalize the paperwork and then they'll have to visit the, um, 
the plant uh, to get the uh, to get the project or get the truck started out. And we're looking at uh, the fall of uh, 2021 for completion of it. It takes, as we've seen in the past, it does take uh, several months to get these trucks. There's so much on them. Uh, it does take several months to get them fabricated. So, uh, so we got that underway. Staff vehicles. There were two uh, pickup trucks that were ordered for this year. Uh, they're the chief and them are expecting those this fall. So, good stuff with the equipment and everything right now is uh, is is either in procurement or has already been ordered. And then finally, for um, fire and EMS, well. Our design phase continues with uh, Station 11. Through our uh, preliminary surveys and design, in discussions with the chief and the, the designer and staff, that we decided that it's going to be best for the project with the scope that was developed is to go with, uh, at this point, to go with uh, a sewer system hookup for the uh, fire station, uh, the land, the amount of land there uh, that the uh, station is sitting on was was just not adequate uh, for a septic tank system, which is what, what is currently in place, but needs to be um, removed. Uh, just not enough land there. If you remember, we have a tower sitting on that property too. Uh, drainage basin is gonna have to be put in. So it's a lot there um, and it was just not feasible to stay with a septic system. So we're moving towards right now, the project will also incorporate and in working with WSA uh, tying into their sewer system uh, for the fire station, and then we'll get to the final design on the on the on the parking lot and the uh, the three point turnaround for the trucks in the back, which is the main uh, the main scope of the project uh, was to get the three point turnaround for the trucks. So with that said, uh, we're probably looking at towards the fall before we can finalize a design on this, and then we'll be getting it uh, getting it underway for construction or out for bids. Uh, later this fall. So with that, I'll move into um, transportation. Uh, the resurfacing program, if you remember, um, the, the board awarded um, the contract to ball and paving uh, last month. Uh, ball and paving will be doing the milling and the patching uh, for the maintenance department who will then come back and, and top that. Uh, we're, we're waiting on any day now to get the notice to proceed for them to start. Um, so they can go ahead and get that get that portion of the project done and uh, move forward with the resurfacing and get the majority of it done completed this year. So again, looking forward to that. The biggest portion or the biggest thing we use supplies for this year for that was to, uh, was to match the GDOT LMIG grant that the county gets every year. Um, so it tag team with that to come up with our budget for the, for the resurfacing. And then moving into our, some of our intersections, the Stewart Mill Road project, as we've been reporting, has been in the, um, in the right of way phase. Uh, Miguel staff has made some good progress since um, I reported last month. They've out of the 10 parcels, they have closed on four, and they're in the process of uh, filing out options on four more, and we, uh, which is leaves them with two parcels that they've got to acquire. So we're right now looking at potentially a September uh, let date to get this project under construction uh, uh, this year also. So we're looking forward to that, getting the right of way completed uh, so that we can get it in under construction. Bright Star and John West, that project is is um, moving forward uh, in the construction phase. Um, Excelsior uh, Construction has got this project. They've mobilized some of their equipment out there, but uh, they're hitting the ground uh, pretty good, and you'll start seeing more equipment and more earth moving going on over the next couple of months. And it definitely looks like we're in a good construction uh, season right now with the, the dry weather that we have and the, the heat. Uh, Sweetwater Church continues um, continues on in the construction phase. Uh, we took this picture just last week. So this is this is on Sweetwater coming up to the intersection. So they're boxing out for that right turn lane. Uh, so this project's uh, moving on 
uh, fairly well, but it will be probably take the rest of this year for the contractor to get it uh, to get it completed. And then moving over to uh, Chapel Hill Road, uh, the board just recently approved for a supplemental agreement for SEI to um, add some additional design work. This is a project we just the, the decision was made to uh, go with the the five lane section, which matched up with the um, uh, comprehensive transportation plan project that was in the out in the future. To go ahead and take advantage of buying the right of way and and also some additional costs that would have been incurred if um, by waiting to to do that to do the extending the links on it and the additional lanes. So I think a good decision there. Uh, it is obviously has slowed the project uh, but now we've gotten SEI back on board uh, as far as design and they'll be uh, jumping and they've already jumped into it real quick working with uh, some more surveying that was going to be needed in preliminary engineering and also working with WSA uh, on some of the things that they're going to require so projects back on track we'll get that completed uh, Miguel can get a uh, preliminary plans for right-of-way and start seeing what the, the amount of time that that's going to take uh, for the right-of-way phase. But we are looking at that going into next year. You know, it'll just be the, just be a matter of how many uh, parcels we impact and in uh, and the, and the time it takes to acquire that the easements in the in the in the property. The Highway Five uh, right turn lane at, at at Douglas Boulevard is is in the design phase. They are making progress. Um, Miguel keeps giving some good updates there. They continue to work with the developer and getting that right of way line uh, where it, he is satisfied with it and it, it still provides um, Miguel and design team enough enough land to get the uh, uh, the utilities in and get that right turn lane in. So uh, still working um, diligently with the design on it and hope he'll get it it completed up. Um, Later this later this year, and we'll get that project out for construction once the right of way has been acquired and all the utilities have been have been set. Uh, Post road bridge over Dog River. Uh, glad to report that the contractor is is still on schedule to um, start the bridge uh, this October. Everything is lining up with the plans, and um, Miguel's. I think at this point he is ready for. For the project to start and the contract to be reaching out to them in, in the next few weeks um, to start getting things set up and getting ready for them to move in so i'm, I'm sure everybody's looking forward to getting that project underway and we have been waiting on it in a minute um, but that as we as we reported in the past gdot left that bridge with uh, a bundle of bridges around the state and um, of course to say the best one for last so in it uh, so it'll be good to get that one started up. Uh, and looking at a couple of our uh, sidewalk projects, Lithia Springs Elementary School, um, the the board awarded the contract to Corbett Group last month, and Miguel and them have already met with them, and we'll be getting them started work uh, just any day. Uh, and Chestnut Log Middle School also, uh, the board awarded the contract to Prime, Prime Contractors. Um, and they'll be those projects will be starting just about jointly um, and should once projects uh, get started should be um, a short uh, construction phase for it uh, they're not that big of projects I will note that both those contractors um, are qualified DBE contractors so that was good um, overall for the, the SPLOS program and, and our vendors and moving into our uh, next sidewalk project is the new Manchester High School. You know, we've been uh, re reporting on our work with GDOT and the, the work that Miguel has done to get that speed limit lowered out there, which that's on the agenda for the board to approve, I believe, this month. Um, once that's done, the, we have Miguel has instructed uh, SEI, the design team, to start back working with GDOT on the permit. The plans are mostly done, so it shouldn't take long. Once GDOT releases us on the permit and they're satisfied with everything and we're good with the plans, we'll hopefully get this project under construction this year also. 
Whitestone Culvert, uh, Miguel reported last this month that uh, the Corbett construction has been given the go ahead to start back. Uh, if you remember, we did go through a, 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 a change order to uh, for reduction, but it did take requiring to revise the footing. So, but they're back on track now and um, back out. We'll be back out if they're not hadn't mobilized uh, as of the day. They should be back out there uh, very shortly and get this project back underway and get it finished up this year. Our street lights on I-20, uh, we've gone through um, and Mark and has been working with Greystone and Georgia Power to get all the administrative stuff done um, and working it through GDOT, get the plans uh, completed and everything signed off on. I, uh, we are we are at that point. Uh, I-20, I will be working with them and hopefully getting some schedules here from Georgia Power and Greystone and I'll be able to start reporting on some dates uh, next month now that they're uh, closer to getting started and, and they've worked through what needed to be worked through on the GDOT end of it. Our um, Highway 92 at Riverside Parkway project, um, this is looking more and more like uh, from Miguel's conversations with GDOT, that GDOT um, is planning on moving forward um, with a quick response project, just like they did at Mount Vernon. So that's great news there. Um, it's uh, at this point the the scope of it is is to go back in with a signal. Uh, I'm sure they're looking at that and doing whatever preliminary design they need to do to make sure it's what the intersection needs. But it's good news. Um, it'll be another project that GDOT's going to partner with the county on um, to get it completed. So that's that's great. And hopefully we'll see that start up this year also. The road widening project. Uh, Miguel was in the process of packaging that project for advertisement. As we've been reporting, the plans have been completed and everything is set to go. And GDOT's approved to move forward with the project. It should be um, advertised in early, uh, early August and we'll be expecting construction bid in September. So good news there. Again, as I mentioned, when I started, uh, we'll have several projects are under construction and we'll, um, we'll have several more that's gonna become online as we get towards the end of the summer and, and, and into early fall. So a lot going on in the county uh, with SPLOS projects, both um, in all three programs, actually, uh, certainly in uh, parks and transportation. So lastly, as far as our uh, transportation projects, SPLOS transportation projects, Maxim Road is uh, another one of our sidewalk projects. Uh, the design is getting very close to being completed on this. Uh, Miguel said well, we'll have um, one parcel that will require some right away or easement to acquire. So that's going to that's going to add a little bit of time to it, but shouldn't add that much. Hopefully, again, uh, this project we'll be able to get this project under construction this year. Um, and have another sidewalk project in progress. So good news there also. And then with that, I'll move from transportation into um, into the parks program. Gigalit Park is doing real well. Uh, we are out of the ground finally with um, with the issues we had with the rock there. All the um, the light poles are up. The building is about 90% complete. The slab around the building was poured uh, last Friday. And the, the, the bulk of the project now is uh, integrated, is ready for the tennis contractor to come in. And I say tennis, he is the, he's the one that's going to make it look like a tennis court. He does the, uh, all the surface work, the pavement section, um, the fence, they pretty much completes the project uh, from this point on. And then um, the main thing after that will be the parking lot and integrated will do that and tie everything back in. So we're getting close to it, uh, making the big jump and finally getting something out there that looks that, that resembles a tennis court, but I think it's gonna, it's gonna end up being a great um, asset for the county uh, once we get it completed. Multipurpose Rec Center, uh, since we reported last month, has made good progress. 
um, out on the site. Um, the, the weather has cooperated. They um, they poured a, Saturday a week ago. They finally got our, our biggest portion of the building slab poured. Um, they'll be bringing in next. We'll, the next the big thing we'll see will be the um, the concrete block, which is the building is basically built out of that. Uh, I came by this morning. They were expecting the, the two gymnasiums has, have a, a fairly large girder that will support that whole roof structure and it it will be delivered today so they brought that crane in on friday uh you can see the size of that crane and you, so the beams are coming in and i think there are two of them in about 100 foot sections so it'll be quite the sight if you're over that way uh to see that uh if you're if you're able to do it so uh but so making some good progress the, the obviously the um, the block need to need to start they're expecting that uh to come in and start that uh, in the next couple of weeks, and then we'll be up, we'll be going up with the finally going up with the building itself. And our senior center uh, continues to be uh, reporting good news there. They they've made just great progress. Everything seems to be coming together good. Um, they're about eighty percent done with the brick. The windows and the doors will start going in over the next couple of weeks. They're painting inside, uh, so we're, we really are getting close. Uh, they'll start grading on the outside this week and getting and prepping the site for, um, if you remember, it's got a, um, a nice walking trail around the perimeter of the property. Uh, they'll start setting the grades for that, for all that to go in. And of course, the parking lots will be right, right on the heels of that. And also setting everything up uh, in, you know, the, the cemetery that's in, in front of the building is a, is a, is a focal point of the, of the project. So they'll be working with that and getting that set up and um, the, some of the hardscape that we have put in the project to uh, protect it and to make it uh, more pleasing to the eye. Um, and with that, our last, the last two projects that um, I report on is Bill Larp and Fair Play. Two separate uh, buildings, but they're in the same contract with Prime Construction. Prime is uh, is making good project project progress on both buildings. Uh, you will see in your um, in the agenda that you have a change order for the for the Bill Art um, Park, uh, and this and Gary can give you a little more detail on it. But it's this is something that's been looked at from the very beginning. Uh, it was trying to come up with the best solution to provide access for handicap bathroom or handicap access from those lower fields at Bill Arp up to the new concession building. We kind of went back and forth based on the budget, um, but it looks like with the price that we have now, Gary and Mark have decided, and as a team, we decided the best option would, most economical option was to go ahead and, and let the contractor do a ramp. Um, it'll, it'll work much better and it, it'll, um, It'll provide uh, much more of a mechanism uh, than in trying to isolate a bathroom down there like we had first talked about doing. Uh, and we'll also save the money, uh, the county money. So good step there. But both of these projects are moving along. The buildings are up probably about 60 to 70 percent complete. We're just doing a lot of rough ends on the plumbing and the mechanical stuff in, in both buildings. Um, and with that, Madam Chair, um, David, uh, David. Good has a, a quick presentation on the vendor. Uh, if time allows, I'm sure he'd love to go through that. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can, David. Okay, uh, right now uh, we have uh, about 119 total vendors. Um, most of those vendors are what we call local. Uh, 38 or 38 or 30 miles outside the county, 44 of them are within Douglas County. The remainder are either 30 miles out or out of the state. We have a total of 81 projects. 42 of those projects are active. The other 39 are uh, completed. I'm trying to make sure I have control of this. Okay, next up is that we have a percentage of local vendors. Um, again, uh, almost 70% of those vendors are within the county. Um, and right now we're really making sure that we put forth the effort of reaching out to 
local business owners and making sure that even through this COVID period of time, they were able to reach out to local vendors and making sure they're part of the process. Um, let's see if I can get to the next slide. Okay. Um, next, okay, thank you. Uh, next up, we actually have, you see the numbers of local vendors. Um, Five million dollars is spent with Douglas County vendors, meaning businesses that are either located in Douglas County or vendors that's owned by people within Douglas County. Uh, right outside Douglas County, such as in Carrollton or right there on the west side of Atlanta, about $23.9 million are spent or $24 million are spent with those contractors. So totally locally, we have about $29.5 million that's being spent with our local um, with our local, and then the remind, remainder is spent um, outside. Um, next slide. And of course, we are in our fourth SPLOS year, and this is the third month. Now, when it comes to a DBE, as um, Terry Gable mentioned earlier, two of our sidewalk projects are actually with DBEs. And, and to this period of time, we have of those, all those active projects, we have about 66 percentage of those being uh, with minority or DBE firms. And when we look at those numbers, DBE, of course, are those that are certified as DBE. Other certifications are within minority, women-owned, veteran-owned, and, um, and of the like. So we really have been making that strong push to look at DBEs and minority vendors to be part of this plus. And again, 66% of those are, are with this um, project. And with that, I am done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Director um, of our communications, David Good, and also our um, project manager of our boss, um, Mr. Terry Gable. Board of Commissioners, at this time, do you have any questions for uh, Mr. Gable? Or um, Mr. David Good? All right. Madam Chair? Yes, okay, there you are. Vice Chairman Robinson, yes. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I've got a couple of, couple of may I? Yes, you may. Sorry. Um, Terry, I, would, I just want to back up again. Um, let's talk about, um, you mentioned something about transportation, specifically our comprehensive transportation plan. Uh, while that's an, an independent project, I think it's related. Um, do you know, do you have any uh, an update on where we stand with that? Or is Miguel Valentin available? Because that, that ties everything together. I'd like to know the status of that because we've got these independent projects that's funded by the SPLOS, but they should all map to this comprehensive transportation plan that we're um, working on. Yes, sir, I think Miguel will need to challenge. Yes, uh, good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Uh, the comprehensive transportation plan update is underway. We've met with uh, the uh, design, uh, the consulting uh, team, and they're putting together the initial documentation to get that process underway. One of the things that they're working on very early on is um, getting a good, robust public engagement plan put together, particularly under the circumstances. And so that is the work that's been going on over the last uh, two to three weeks that the process has been underway. Okay. All right. I won't believe it. So it's in process. Uh, and, and you hit on the head about public engagement and where we go from here. I'm going to skip it. We got this feedback. Um, my next question has more to do with um, Lee Road. Again, going back to the question, Lee Road um, widening project and ultimately expansion. Uh, again, Miguel and Terry, you guys both are, it's going to be a tag team and extension, which is, that's all about economic development. Um, and obviously it's just not dealing with um, congestion and traffic. Um, obviously that's tied to sort of a, what we want to call a, um, a master plan for that area, specifically at the corner of Fairbury Road and Lee Road. Uh, we, we've had a, an enhanced master plan that's or small area that has been done in that area. Can we can we talk, can we, can about, we talk about in a little bit more detail, um, uh, Gail? How long? How long beyond where are we? 18 months. 
can we expect the, the, the citizens to benefit from this in 2021 or in the 2020? The, uh, the, the timeline for the widening project, widening. phase two, that yep. will widen the road from I-20 to State Route 90. That is a two-year process. So it will so be initially, initially utilities, utilities being located. located. Probably will take probably about six months or so. Months or and then uh, construction and then, uh, for 18 for months. 18 so months. Uh, it'll, uh, be, it'll be parts of it will be available, be available to be utilized during that time. Period. Uh, but some, uh, of, but the, some, some of, of it will not be will because not it will be, be under construction. Under all right, thank you. All right, thank you. At that point, at that point, this, this feedback this, is telling yeah. me we've got to be um, um, because it takes away from the aspect away of our meetings. Of our meetings. Uh, uh, part, part of communication part is of listening to the words, and this echo really throws. Uh, it's not um, obviously um, uh, some of it is users, some of it is placement, something that we, we will perfect over time. But I, I can't wait till we get back in person, though. Uh, because while I appreciate what technology does, it can never replace um, person to person and the effectiveness of be being able to communicate. So I yield the floor, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Vice Chairman Robinson. Certainly, I agree with you. I echo your concerns about getting back in person. Uh, technology uh, has, it can be trying at times. And what I'm trying to do, uh, so you all know, uh, when everyone is speaking, I try to cut my uh, my mic off because it seems to, to uh, dissolve the, the uh, noise that's in the background. And it may be just a feeder coming from my microphone as well. Okay, uh, because I'm leading the meeting. Any other questions from the board regarding this presentation? If there's no other question, uh, there are no other questions. Uh, just, okay. Just one matter, Chair. Just one matter. Just one. Okay. Just one. Commissioner Terry, Mitchell. Terry, if you would uh, talk to me again about the number. I guess when we get, I'm making this committee's on a payment, I think in October and April. Commissioner, uh, can you repeat that question? You, you were. Okay. Okay. No, I, I was asking the question. You spoke about the numbers of the payment, the payment that comes around October and April, I think it is. The yeah. 16.8. And the, okay. Yeah. Speak again on those numbers again. I just, I, I, I kind of missed that. Let me uh, let me put it back up there real quick. Um, okay, so um, what we what we're looking at this year in in year four uh, will be October first of twenty twenty. We'll make the first payment of five hundred nine thousand six hundred twenty-five dollars, gotcha. and then, then April first of twenty twenty-one, it'll be sixteen million eight hundred fourteen thousand. Um, that'll be due April first of twenty twenty-one, and that'll bring that total payment to the seventeen point three million. Got you. And then there's a that uh, smaller payment uh, that's coming as well, though. Correct that. That's down the road, though. Uh, you, yeah, the so the last payment, the last bond payment, will be in year five, and it's it's just under five million dollars, and that that that, to my knowledge, uh, is the last one uh, for the bond. And just and you mentioned earlier too, though, it looked like we're about, I mean, we're doing well, even though with this pandemic and everything else that's going on, finances are are not as haven't dropped off as we. We're anticipating, I guess, correct? Correct, Commissioner. It's um, at this point, it's it's still solid, and uh, I hope whatever's driving the numbers will continue to do that. Uh, it's going to take us to get to that 17.3 million dollar mark. Um, as far as you know, we collect the revenues first. Uh, it'll 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 take us probably to um, uh, December. Okay. Have the, the uh, enough revenues to make this full payment, um, but uh, hopefully it'll be sooner than that. And and the way this thing is driving, it appears that we won't have any problems when it come around to the 16.8 if the numbers continue as they are. That's correct. That that is certainly correct. And again, we're you know we're about 3.4 million dollars 
over what was projected, which, you know, it, it's, uh, it puts us in a little bit better shape if they do start dropping some. Got you. Okay, and last but not least, so the parks and rec pieces that are moving, uh, I was down uh, in Lithia Springs, and that thing is like, are we moving in tomorrow? Or, because <laughs> it's moving, it, it, it's kind of moving a lot faster than I would ever have thought, but it's moving pretty quickly. Your thoughts on that, kind of where we truly are? Yeah, um, you know, we, we meet with the contractor monthly or twice a month, actually. Um, he is, he, he is just, he's on schedule, and it's, um, I don't have the date in front of me, but it was projected to be completed by November 1st. Uh, he is he is on track to do that. Got you. And we don't, he's not seeing anything that should, as far as materials, uh, you know, we're still getting reports of certain things. It just depends on what you're trying to buy at the time of getting materials for these projects, but uh, he's not seeing any problems with that either. And has any cost change on material costs based on supply and demand as the cost went up or they still we still within budget i guess uh, well yes yeah, certainly with for the project we're, we're, we're within budget um with the senior center and the community center i guess that thing uh moving right along as well it is yes uh because we've made good progress since the last since our last reported um and they finally got out you know and then as we reported you know that was a little slow start down there because of the of the subgrade and uh, but they've made some good progress and we start getting those walls going up and it'll it'll start looking like a gymnasium here next couple of months got you okay and last but not least i guess the radio towers uh have checked out so we should be uh good to go at this point yes uh motorola's on track to 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 be working with the chief and tusa the 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 consultant uh, to get that project wrapped up by the end of the month. The BDA is, is, was, was supposed to have been completed last week. Uh, sirens are currently being done and, and no, no reasons for those not to be completed. Um, and it, it'd be ready to turn over completely to, uh, the, to the county by the end of the month. Gotcha. And, and what kind of coverage are we, are we getting? Are we 95 and above or? It's 95 and above. So, okay. So, okay. All right. So we, we did meet that goal. Okay. Yeah. And last but not least, David Good, if you would, please. Um, if, if you'll give me some numbers on how we're doing with minority businesses, I think you probably went over that, but I stepped out of the room for a half a minute. So if you would, please. Uh, yes, when it comes to minority businesses, we are around 66% um, um, as far as on active projects. Now, when I took the last look at our total list of minority firms, DBE firms, it was around 28 totally out of the 119 vendors. But of course, some of those vendors include WSA, the city of Douglasville, Douglas County, um, larger corporations like Motorola, Georgia Power, and Greystone. So right now, the numbers of those firms from when we first started looking at this um, about over a year and a half ago, uh, we were closer to it was even less than 10 percent, I believe, at that time only. Um, I believe at that time only SEI and H.J. Russell were minority firms. But as time has gone on, from the meetings that the board of commissioners have put out to the engagement by the Chamber of Commerce and Economic mm -hmm. Development, we've actually been able to reach out to more firms. They've come to those DB uh, set of meetings that we've had. They've come mm -hmm. to do business in with and for Douglas County. And through, I believe that through that is where our percentages started um, coming up. Our, de our Department of Procurement, they've done a great job into putting information out. And now that everyone sees that Douglas County is truly open for business, they're okay. coming in and getting these contracts. Um, as Terry had mentioned, uh, the two of the uh, projects that we put out for the sidewalks are both done by minority firms. Um, SEI has a uh, quite a few uh, projects going on. So our numbers, each time I report, they've gone up last month. When I reported, we were at 64%. Th this month I reported we're at 66%. Good, good, good. And I got to give kudos to Vice Chairman Robinson of, of leading that charge of trying to do how to do business with Douglas County and you guys as well. So kudos on that end. Well, good stuff. All righty. Uh, outside of that, that's all I've got. And thank you again, David and Terry. Thank, uh, thank, you. thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. And thank you again. David, uh...
Good, and also uh, um, Terry Gable, thank you all so much for coming in and presenting and look forward to next month. And hopefully our numbers, I, I like the exciting news and hopefully we'll just, the trend will continue. Board Commissioners, we're gonna move on to the approval of our minutes. Uh, please be prepared to uh, read the minutes and review them and uh, we will approve accordingly tomorrow. Board of Commissioners, we have tab number four, five, and six, which are public hearings, and I'll read each one. And certainly the public hearings will be discussed and reviewed by our citizens uh, to, uh, to give them opportunity to speak tomorrow. And of course, we'll be laid off with uh, two, we'll be laid off with Miguel Valentin, our Director of uh, Transportation, and then our legal department uh, will uh, sponsor one and take forth, uh, bring forth to the Board of Commissioners, which will be Attorney Bernard. Uh, tab number four is to consider street name uh, and address changes in the area area of the relocated post road and veteran, veterans memorial highway and that will again be director uh, uh, Miguel Valentin uh, tab number five to consider amending the Douglas County Code of Ordinance article five of chapter 14 section 14-74 regarding speed limits to reduce the speed limit uh, limits on Riverside Parkway and State Route 92, 154, and 166. And again, that uh, public hearing will be uh, kicked off with uh, by our Director uh, of our Transportation, Miguel Valentin. And tab number six is to consider amending the Douglas County Code of Ordinances ordinance by adding a new ordinance regarding hazardous pay. Uh, and that'll be led by our legal department, our county attorney, uh, Ken Bernard. Board of Commissioners, we're going to move right into our uh, business items. We have tab number seven. Uh, if first, let me ask, are there any questions regarding these public hearings? If not, we'll move on to our business items. Tab number seven, authorization to accept the FY21 uh, Criminal Justice Coordinating Council Justice Incentive Grant in the amount of $251,909 and amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. We have our director, Jennifer King, here this morning. Director King, good morning. Good morning. And um, please this, with us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you. Thank, this is our uh, Criminal Justice Coordinating Council grant, um, Justice Incentive grant that we get every year. And the amount this year is $251,909. Um, and that goes for our at risk youth programming that we utilize in the office. And there is no match. Okay, any questions from the Board of Commissioners? Thank you so much, uh, Director King. He says no match, I believe it's pretty self-explanatory. Board of Commissioners, if you don't have any comment, I'm gonna move on to tab number eight. Tab number eight is authorization to approve a contract with the Department of Human Services Division, Family and Children's Services for Juvenile Programs Administration to provide drug screen services and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director King again. Yes, ma'am, this is a, a new opportunity for us with um, the Department of Family and Children's Services through the state. We have conducted drug screening for them for a lot of years and this contract will now allow us to be paid um, through them as a vendor for doing those drug screens that we already do. Um, so okay. there, there is a, a raid and all that paperwork I believe I attached to the agenda if I did that correctly. And I believe you did, yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Board of Commissioners. Any questions about regarding this uh, uh, contract with the Department of Human Services? Uh huh. Uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Thank you, ma'am. Um, real quick, um, my, my question becomes: When you say "let us do it," who is us? Who is Sorry. we? <laughs> <laughs> it is juvenile programs, um, of course, under you guys, the Board of Commissioners. Um, our office, uh, the workers in my office, have always done dress screening for DFACT and our own clients as well. We are all trained. We use um, Quest Laboratories for our confirmations. We do quick screens within the office. Um, so we, we've just always done it. Um, we're just kind of excited that we have an opportunity for them to pay us for that service now. Right, so we actually- James Oponde. We, we actually- Is now swab, exiting. We, we actually swab, I'm, I'm using that loosely, right? We actually- engage whoever we're talking to and we package all that up and we send it away to a third party. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, we, we do urine screens and hair follicle screens in the office. Yeah. Um, we have a quick screen cup that will give us kind of a, a quick read on the urine samples. So that'll tell us if we need to send it to the lab or not. Um, and then we seal those specimens up 
um, they come and pick them up and they process through Quest. I gotcha. And I guess um, it, there's no liability. This is something that you're already doing. So I, I don't have to ask that question that, that we're covered by engaging with medical procedures and all of that, right? Again, yes. <laughs> this is new so I'm, I'm asking i'm sure i can appreciate you know i'm going to ask that type of question so all right so it looks like you guys are you're just expanding your capacity um obviously recouping some additional money that we can provide a higher service we're leveraging what we currently do to a broader audience um uh, i think i'm fine if, if um i'm going to yield on that madam chair i'm, I'm sufficiently done thank you thank, thank you. you thank you so much vice chairman robin it's robinson any other questions from the board Okay, we'll move on. Thank you so much, uh, Director King. We're going to move on to tab number nine, authorization to approve Braystone Power Corporation uh, right-of-way easement in uh, order to install a transformer at the new Boundary Waters Recreation Center as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Dukes, Gary Dukes, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. We're just giving Greystone permission right away to uh, get to the new community center that's being built so they can set a transformer. Okay, definitely need a transformer for this uh, nice uh, big uh, recreation center. Board of Commissioners, any questions or comments regarding this? Okay. We're going to move on to tab number 10, authorization to approve prime constructions change order in the amount of $29,235.09 for construction of a handicap, camp, a handicap ramp from the lower ball fields to the new concession stand at Bill Arp to be funded through the 2016 SPLOS funds as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Dukes again, please. Yes, ma'am. Uh as you know, it's been an uh, ongoing issue how we were going to provide access from the lower ball fields at Bill Arp up to the concession stand. Uh, initially, we got a price from the architect uh, that we felt was just not feasible. It was around $90,000 to build a ramp. And so we decided we would put a standalone restroom down there to make accommodations for the handicapped. Well, after that time, I got in a conversation with the contractor, Trey Robinson, with uh, Prime Construction, and he indicated that he could build the ramp for far less. So I asked uh, Mr. Robinson to give us a price, and also, if he would, after he gave us a price, to make sure the fire marshal signed off on the access ramp. Uh, he has done that. He gave us a price, uh, he, and we also needed a small construction wall built. I think $3,500 was part of that. So he gave us the price, and the price for the ramp came in at $25,835, and the construction wall was $3,400 for a total price of $29,235.09 which by doing this, the fire marshal, as I said, has signed off on it. It eliminates not only access, uh, giving access to a restroom, but it also allows handicapped people a way to come up to get to the concession stand. So this eliminates the standalone restroom, which was gonna be around $57,000 to build it. So this ramp, will allow full access to the concession and the restroom and save us about $25,000. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Director Dukes. Uh, uh, that is quite a, a huge savings and, and thanks to our parks and, their, uh, and recreations uh, chairman, uh, Commissioner Mitchell, uh, job well done. Uh, Board of Commissioners, you have any comments to make on this uh, construction of a handicap ramp for the lower fields at Villar Park? Any comments? Okay, thank you so much. Pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna move on to tab number 11. Thank you so much, Director Dukes. We're gonna move on to tab number 11, authorization for Douglas County Sheriff's Office to renew a contract 
with Administrative Solutions and Corporation for the Douglas County Sheriff's Office Jail and Make Medical Plan, effective July 1st, 2020 through June 20, uh, June 30th, 2021, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending legal uh, the review. Uh, Major Holmes, are you here? I believe I saw you earlier. I am. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Okay. Can you just okay. share what this is all about to the Board of Commissioners? Yeah, this is yeah. a renewal for the um, contract with Administrative Solutions that handles all of the inmate. Is there background noise coming? I don't have anything on in my office. But this uh, handles, she, uh, they handle the uh, all inmate um, uh, outside visits, all outpatient visits and stuff from the jail. This is not correct health. It's the contract we have each year with Janie Floyd. So there's no increase in her fee uh, for this. Okay, thank you so much, Major Holmes. Uh, Board of Commissioners, do you have any questions or concerns for Major Holmes? All right, thank you, Major Holmes. I'll move on to the next. Oh, I, he I heard someone. Yeah, Madam Chair, District 2. Yes, okay, Vice Chairman Robinson, District 2. All right, you have yep. the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Major, real quick. So, I mean, you're going down a good path. Can you... Um, Explain the difference between the correct health contract and its administrative solutions. Um, can you give a little bit more detail on the differences? And then I'll have a question after you explain the difference between the two, two contracts. Yeah, correct health is everything that happens inside the jail with the inmates. Uh, they handle, they have the exclusive contract for everything that happens within the confines of the, of the facility. But when somebody has to go out for outpatient uh, or go out to the hospital or whatever, uh, Administrative Solutions is the ones who oversee um, the fees and and, uh, and any monies that are incurred for that. So, um, is there any reason we separate the two? Is that more of a conflict? Or I mean, I'm just curious because I'm, you know every now and then you learn something in the moment, and it's like, okay, why do we have two contracts? Um, and uh, it, it, I'm not challenging it; I'm questioning at this point. Um, mm -hmm. um, Okay, so you've got somebody who's overseeing what? Is she following them? Is she just following? I mean, not her. I'm not putting her on the spot. Is it more of it? Um, I'm just overseeing the payment process. I mean, what is she overseeing? What are they overseeing? Well, number one, making sure that they're billed properly. Yep. Um, also, um, utilizing the uh, the uh, best locations that we can outside uh, doctor's offices and things like that that we uh, that we send these inmates out to to where uh, it's economically the best thing for Douglas County. Right so she's this person serves as more of a liaison mm -hmm. um, um, to, to sort of line up and I get I know your responsibility for is inside I get it but every now and then we have to engage for specialists I understand that so this person is supposed to they have sort of a trustee and oversight uh, a, a, a project coordination I mean I'm just I'm, mm -hmm. I'm getting a bit into this and, and so that's the value that's the exchange that we're giving this this that, you know that they make sure that um because again your, your focus is what your focus is meaning you know sheriff's office proper but we do have to engage the medical community in a broader sense. And we believe this person is providing us some value and make sure that they, you, it's, it's more specialized. Is that right? And it's something yeah. that Correct Health can't do. We think that this, the two contracts should be separate. Is that true? It, that so we believe, the sheriff believes that these contracts, and this is something that, this is not just new. This is, this is the, uh, when this is renewed, this will be the 16th year that we've utilized administrative solutions in this capacity. Right. So it's not nothing new. It, 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 that's my point. Got it. 16 years. Uh, got it. Okay. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. I'm good. Okay. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Robinson. Any other questions, board, before I move on to tab number 12? Tab number 12 is authorization for Douglas County Sheriff's Office to renew stop loss insurance agreement with HCC Life Insurance Company and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Um, Major Holmes, once again. Okay, uh, this is the uh, insurance uh, that we paid to cover the inmates. It's a stop loss 
Um, this is an increase this year. There wasn't one last year, um, but this year there is an increase of 4% uh, for the cost of this. And this is for the reinsurance. It's a $100,000 deductible per inmate should um, the, an inmate incur major uh, uh, medical expenses. Madam Chair. Thank, you, thank you so much, uh, Major Holmes. I heard you. I was just trying to turn my mic, mic uh, microphone back on. Uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, I yes, hear your question. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Um, all right, Major. All right, so this is, I get stop loss. I, I get, we, we pay up to $100,000 and then this insurance of the insurance kicks in because it's reinsurance. I, I, I get, I get the difference. Um, um, at 4% increase, right now, I'm just highlighting that for the, the, for those who can hear that the expenses are, are growing faster. That 4% is going to normal cost of living. But that expense rate is growing. Now I get major. This is not about you, but it's highlighting the point of the cost of doing business, uh, the cost of, of conducting uh, the county's business. Um, there are increases. Uh, we do have exposure, uh, regardless of um, litigation happens. Litigation can come at the county for any number of reasons um, that you have to incur the cost. Um, and there's the price to pay. Um, that that being said, um, um, you, you're comfortable, uh, Major Holmes, the sheriff. You guys are good with this. This I'm sure Matt Laverne and everybody has weighed in on this and work. Uh, no, what did I hear? Pending legal review, or did I hear that we're already good to go? Uh, Jennifer has it. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I, I would think that uh, we should be ready to go. But she got it a, a week or so ago, or something like that. And it's no difference in the contract. Either yes, contract sir, is different. Yes, sir. We've reviewed it, and it's no different than last time. It's good. It, it, it's good to go. And, um, and and again, how do we pick insurers? And, and Matt Laverne may not be on the call, perhaps, because he may not have been in this conversation. But I, I'd like to have the answer to say, well, how do we pick insurers? Because we don't get to see that very often. Those type of things tend to be taken offline in, in, in certain cases. And... Uh, like legal, and I'm just curious how we um, how we pick the insurer. Administrative Solutions is the one that uh, negotiated with this insurance company, so they're the ones that uh, picked this one. Is my understanding? Oh wow! So they have wow! They have not just make sure we go out like 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 caseworkers. You should go to this outpatient moment because uh, we have a relationship. This person has authority. Oh, oh, I see it. Ooh, okay. I, I get it. This, this, okay, I got it. I'm going to yield the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm good. Okay, Back. thank you so much. I see Matt, uh, our director, Matt Laverne, on. Did you want to uh, add to yes. the comments? Yes. Uh, good morning. Thank you, Madam Chairman, and uh, good morning, Commissioners. Um, yes. Uh, with insurance, they are professional services, so we do use brokers and TPAs to go out to market to make sure that we are getting the biggest or that the board is getting the biggest bang for its buck every year. Uh, so, yes, it is our brokers and TPAs that go out and look for those, and they are the ones that find coverage ultimately, and we contract with board of commissioners, uh, contracts with them. So, Matt, you're, you're comfortable you have a firm that's been in there for 16 years and they're um, brokering services for us, um, all types. And, and again, your, your, your input matters. Your, 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 your contribution to this conversation matter, which is why I sought you uh, because we're talking insurance. And like, well, where is Matt? Um, so can you just weigh in on that part? You, you have a comfort in that. I mean, I get legal, I get to share, but you are um, who we think is important for insurance. Are you comfortable with that relationship? Are you comfortable with what we're getting, please weigh in. Yes, sir. as far as the reinsurance uh, coming in, I believe uh, Bobby said a uh, 4% uh, increase in uh, in premiums. Uh, that is uh, that is very good uh, considering industry norms are usually nine to 11%. 
So, you know, that's something we're going to look at with every new contract uh, or every uh, annual renewal is how much are they going up by, uh, what percentage rate. And some years are better than others. And it, uh, while they did go up at 4%, uh, that's, uh, that is below industry norm. Okay. And now, now, were you involved or are you involved in sort of how the county is, is spending uh, I believe at some point, I think we signed off on um, a consultant to come in and look at various aspects of the county. You know, it's not, that it, it, it's, it's not always about the spend, it's how we spend and can we get cost savings through volumes and different things in our best practices. I, I, are you aware of that that consulting engagement? Have you been involved at all? I thought insurance was identified as one of the areas we were supposed to look at. Yes, sir, I have, and we have provided uh, information to uh, to the consultants and continue uh, um, and get, getting geared up to answer any questions that they may have. Uh, with that being said, um, they are not a broker of record, meaning that they uh, would not have our loss runs to go out and for them to benchmark, uh, but at the same time, uh, they can uh, take a close look at it uh, at different aspects of our uh, insurance programs. Uh, I'm currently working with our broker. Uh, as can Douglas County continues to grow, uh, we do have to be prepared for the next steps uh, in our life cycle as far as the uh, insurance structuring, the programs, uh, how much risk the board is willing to take and how much risk we want to transfer out. Um, you know, all of those affect our premiums, but... Uh, I mean, you you bring up a good point. Which point, right? We're, we're growing up, Matt, and we're going. To, we're coming right on the edge, becoming a large county by both population and just uh, the demand is having. It's no no longer, um, you know, sort of a small rural community. Um, as much as our minds, we would like to keep it that way, and how we want to feel about each other. Uh, I think we also have to acknowledge, though, that with that type of density. Um, comes a lot of different things, structurally, systemic, and everything else. So duly noted. Um, thank you for adding to this conversation. As always, I appreciate you. Madam Chair, I'm going to yield the floor. I know you got to keep going. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Madam Chair. Madam Chair, your mic's not on. Your mic's not on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you. I ask Bobby yes, a you, question? You may. Yes, ma'am. Yes. I'm so sorry. I couldn't get my, <laughs> turn my mic on. <laughs> okay, Bobby, um, if someone is arrested and they're getting benefits, say, from the VA or Social Security or things such as that, do their benefits stop upon arrest? It's a question I don't know the answer to. Uh, I, I don't know the answer to that, so I don't want to speculate. Uh, because uh, there's been a debate on whether or not it's uh, upon their arrest or upon their indictment, which is uh, two different things. So uh, could we kind of look at that and see? Because uh, if uh, the benefits that they have upon arrest can continue, it would certainly save the counties a lot of money. Madam Guider, this is Ken Bernard. Uh, we've, okay. We've looked at that issue previously in debates with the state about corrections for people under sentence. The state has not put, picked up. We've had that issue come up in what would be considered chase situations. And the law, uh, the law, we become responsible whenever they're, I'm using the words loosely, in our custody. But custody can be pursuant to a chase and for other circumstances that would extend beyond just simply being in our jail. And so th the insurance that's being provided, if that is be gonna become an issue, I can promise you in their language for identification, hold harmless, et cetera. They're gonna first look to alternative insurance before the stop loss hits. But in most cases, we will find that as soon as we are, are starting to do some police activity that involves someone who ultimately gets injured, uh, it's gonna be an argument that it's on the, uh, on the sheriff and the county immediately. So anyway, I, I wouldn't let that stop what y'all are doing today. 
because the insurance carrier will raise it a defense so they don't have to pay if there is one. So they're actually will be on our side in connection with that. But the law is very, very broad, more broader than you would assume. Yeah. OK, well, with that, I yield back. Thank you. OK, thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. Thank you so much, uh, Attorney Bernard. And also thank you, Major Holmes. We're going to move on to tab number 13, authorization to accept funds from the state court uh, technology fund in the amount of $9,955.68 for laptops for the state court's uh, clerk's office staff. Um, clerk uh, Tammy Howard. Madam Chair, I think I'm handling this one. Okay, you are. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma um, so so this, this is normal protocol for uh, transfers from the state court technology fund. This, these are COVID-19 related expenses and we should be able to get reimbursed for these. Okay, thank you so much, uh, County Attorney. Any questions from the board or comments? All right, sounds good. You said sounds like these uh, will be, this is re reimbursable expenses. These are reimbursable expenses. All right, Board of Commissioners, we're going to move on to the approval of expenses. Please be prepared tomorrow to approve accordingly. That's step number Madam 14 Chair. and 15. And then we're going to move. Chair. Yes, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Yes, yes put your slide. Uh, just, yes. just slide. Pre previous question. Um, it, and it was the county administrator. Um, can we repeat what his, his last thing was? I just didn't hear it. It was breaking up and I had a question. County Administrator, you're handling for Tammy. Say that again one more time, please. Yes, sir. So this is normal protocol for, for the board to approve transfers from the state court technology fund. Um, and these funds will be used to purchase um, laptops for her staff um, to help with uh, telecommuting. And this is COVID-19 related and they should be uh, reimbursable. Okay. No, I appreciate that, um, and I, I'm 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 encouraged to see we're we're uh, expanding the use of those funds that have a, that are available to us. Um, I, I wanted to also caveat um, when we say we should be reimbursed. We we, we got in in trouble uh, with that Lee Road expansion about um, commentary that was put forth that we thought that we should we could get reimbursed, and the county went ahead and spent money on out of the general fund or maybe out of the capital transportation fund to move projects along, uh, yet there was no, and it was known that they weren't reimbursable, but they turned out to be, uh, and we wound up taking a hit on that. I'm just making a statement. Um, let's be careful, and not that this was the situation, but if you get like, okay, when we say that something's reimbursable, we need to know that it's reimbursable. Um, let, let's not do sleight of hand. Uh, again, it's something about history. Um, that you got to learn from it so that you don't repeat it. And I never want to be in that place, Madam Chair, where we, you know, we have to take write-offs and do things uh, to make up for the wrongs of the past when they could have been avoided. So I just ask for the integrity um, uh, accordingly. When we say something's reimbursable, it truly is reimbursable that we're not using money out of a general fund, that obviously it can be reimbursed, but if we find, well, if we, we found out, well, they're really not going to reimburse this. We've had too many of those conversations. Well, you know, we thought there's going to be a reimbursement. We thought we can push this through. Like, no, we can't have that anymore. Uh, that that type of, um, you know, either you know or you don't know. Either it, it is or it's not. And it's okay if it's not. Um, but let's not play that game to to push things forward. And that's not the situation, Mark. You know it's not. I'm just making a point um, for the record. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson and District 2 Commissioner. Um, um, County Attorney, certainly we will be coming forward uh, to, to call a meeting, a special call meeting with our Board of Commissioners so we can finally uh, still discuss some of our CARES Act spending and what our expectations are on expenses. So we certainly have not dropped the ball on that. We just uh, still are waiting on some more information from the state. And of course, this is federal funding. So Board of Commissioners, please bear with us. We are waiting on some more information. And as soon as that comes forth, I will be calling a special call meeting for uh, with the Board of Commissioners so we can allocate, discuss funding and uh, potential expenses, reimbursable expenses uh, for the allocated $5.5 million from the state. All right, let's uh, move on. We can move on to uh, discussion, uh, one discussion item, which is tab number six. It is to, to discuss pending 
annexation of the parcels 208, 257, 252, and 253 of the 18th District along Causey Road, submitted by the City of Austell. Uh, Manager Ron Roberts, good morning. Good morning, Madam good Chair morning. and Commissioners. Make sure I don't have any feedback on this. I've been okay, and I'm gonna turn my uh, microphone off while you speak. I set okay. my phone on the other side of the room, so it wouldn't would be an issue. Yeah, I wanted to update everyone. Uh, we got a letter from uh, Daryl Weaver, the Assistant Director of Community Affairs, dated uh, July 1st. Came in right before the July 4th holiday, with their intent to annex the uh, aforementioned land lots in that in District 18. The uh, the letter itself was was incorrectly uh, addressed to Tammy Howard and not to Lisa Watson, the clerk. So we we had a call with him on July the 9th to uh, you know formally request a, a, a legally correct notification that uh, that actually would kick off a 30 day period for us to be able to respond back um, uh, according to the DCA regulations. The uh, the land lots themselves encompass about 62 acres. The request was to go from RLD and CH to LI. Um, I uh, it was emailing Lisa Watson this morning to see if she'd gotten anything from the city uh, that would uh, would actually be the correct legal notification about this potential annexation, and she has not gotten anything. Um, but we also addressed another issue. Um, that uh, Mr. Schaefer had picked up on, and uh, he's actually sharing the screen now, but um, the uh, the annexation, if it was to go through, would, would uh, basically orphan about 39 acres where the arrows pointed to uh, on the screen there. If that annexation was was valid and it was to go through, it, they would access basically everything south of Causey Road, as it appears on your screen, and orphan 39 acres of county property uh, in between there. So we had uh, raised those questions and concerns to uh, to Daryl Weaver in our uh, return uh, letter. Both the, their letter from Austell and the letter that we wrote back to them are in uh, the, the, uh, the packet on Civic Clerk. But um, honestly, not having a, a legal notification. I don't know where this stands. We went ahead and put it on the agenda because we wanted to let y'all know about this potential pending activity and just to bring it forward. And that's uh, and that's kind of where we're at with that right now. So uh, until we get something back from the city, I don't know if they've decided to not move forward or 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 what have you. Um, we're just not sure. But I thought I'd bring it forward. It was already on the agenda. So I'll, I'll right. answer any questions you have. Yeah, Ron, Madam Chair, if I can. Ron, what yes. I would do, even though there may be a defect in notice because we actually have constructed notice having received it, I would probably file a precautionary objection if this board uh, so is inclined, stating whatever the basis of that objection is, uh, and, and just point out, and I can help you point out the defect in service as an as a, we're not waiving by filing a conditional objection our right to actual notice, including all the documentation that should go with it that is outlined by you and Phil. But I would probably file a precautionary objection just because of the issue of some constructive notice to preserve whatever claims we have. So I would proceed like we actually have notice for purposes today. And mm -hmm. if you want the board to take some action, let's take the action, even if it's conditional on getting proper notice. So that record is perfected. I understand. I appreciate the thoughts, Ken. We'll take care of it. We've already, uh, we'd already had a call with DCA about everything I just went over. So they should be very well aware that we would be moving forward with, with uh, just such a notification. So uh, probably, Madam Chair, we should have a discussion with the board uh, and staff for purposes of maybe this going on as new business tomorrow to vote conditionally to object subject to reserving all other rights we have, including the right to proper notice, so that staff can send out the objection timely, just in case the computation time is pursuant to constructive notice and not actual notice, although I do think that is a, uh, a manifest defect in this service. But anyway, I think we should probably do it. 
and that would start the dialogue anyway between the two governments. Okay, thank you, Attorney Bernard, and thank you also, Ron Roberts. Board of Commissioners, any comments that you have? You want to weigh in? Certainly, I'm at the will of the board. Uh, whatever you want to do, I believe that it would be, uh, it makes sense for us to add it tomorrow so we could have some dialogue and discussion. Board of Commissioners, anybody want to weigh in? Chairman Jones, this is Commissioner Carthen. Commissioner Carthen, you have the floor. Thank you. Yes, I, I concur with uh, Attorney uh, Ken Bernard that we should uh, take this uh, under advisement and send the doc proper documentation um, to the uh, Austell government just to let them know that we, we would like to uh, to get proper notification. That way we can do it in a timely fashion. Uh, so I concur with Attorney Bernard. Let's let's do that. Let's take it back into session and add it as a, a discussion item. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Any other comments from the board before I move on to the next item? All right. Uh, we, we look forward to seeing this item on the agenda tomorrow. Clerk, do you have everything recorded? That's what I'm assuming you have every, you've recorded. Yes, ma'am, and I'll get with legal to, um, to, to know what exactly to put on the agenda. Okay. Board of Commissioners, uh, certainly we're going to move on to the next item, which is Commissioner's comments. And I wanted to just lead off with uh, just a few things today. Certainly we usually go straight into a uh, call for an executive session. But before we go into an executive session, I want this information to be uh, uh, talked about and discussed publicly. Uh, Board of Commissioners, today we heard a numerous amount of public comment statements regarding the Confederate monument displayed on the courthouse, course, courthouse lawn. At, at this particular time, I'm not calling for any action. Um, today, however, today's climate with the unrest of racism in the nation, it is important for my administration to understand the context of the history of the Confederate monument uh, located on the public property of the courthouse and associated laws and penalties associated with removal of such uh, monuments in the state of Georgia. For obvious reason, as a product of being a bottle-fed uh, uh, baby by a former slave, uh, my great-grandmother, who was uh, named Emma Baggett, uh, and her father was actually the slave that came over from Africa. I know firsthand what all this means. For obvious reason and uh, for firsthand reasons, I also know what it means to ride on the back of a bus and drink out of colored water fountains and certainly was involved in the movement in the 60s. So a lot of this uh, information today that our citizens provided was certainly it was a, 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 a reflection of some things that I've, I've experienced in my lifetime. And certainly Board of Commissioners, I have taken the time to conduct a thorough research to grasp a deep understanding of when the Confederate monument arrived in Douglas County, which was stated earlier by some of our citizens. I was really impressed with the history lesson they provided this morning, which was 1914. And then it says who extended the Confederate monument to, to be placed on the property of Douglas County. That, that uh, extension was provided by the Board of Commissioners back in 1914, and we have the actual documents. And then also uh, the public uh, to be placed on our property and what specific laws have been uh, enacted to aggravate and restrict the removal of the Confederate monuments from the public property of the county, Douglas County Courthouse. And certainly as we uh, examine the pathway going forward, uh, Board of Commissioners, please note uh, the facts regarding the laws associated with removal of the Confederate monuments in uh, the state of Georgia lends really a, uh, not a lot of room for debate at this particular juncture under the Georgia law OCGA 50-31, uh, which prohibits relocation, removal, and concealment of Confederate monuments. Furthermore, on April 26, 2019, our state, uh, should I say the Senate Bill 77 passed into law further protecting Confederate monuments in the state of Georgia. Last week, we all received letters. All of us received letters from the sons of the Confederate veterans, and I hope you had an opportunity to review the con content of the letter. And also, I sent you all a, an email that I had received. Uh, uh, it was an email correspondence from the West Metro NAACP thanking me for educating them uh, and their, educa uh, their organization on the Georgia law of OCGA 50-31. And now this prestige, prestigious organization is redirecting their concerns regarding the removal of the Confederate monument located on the courthouse lawn uh, to the Georgia legislature. Again, Board of Commissioners, I'm not calling for any action today as we work to address the public's concerns with the confines of the law, within the confines of the law. I encourage you to review 
the supporting documents, including the draft uh, resolution that I have proposed. And I believe I heard uh, it was another uh, resolution out there by Commissioner Carthen. And I would request that you, uh, I will request Lisa to provide copies of all the documents that I was able to find. Plus you all have your let individual letters uh, from the uh, Confederate sons. Board of Commissioners, this is an, a perfect opportunity for you all to go back to your individual corners and examine and research the information and further engage in dialogue and discussions with your respective districts. Again, no action is required today. However, I would like to hear your thoughts and encourage you to weigh in uh, regarding your ideas and a path going forward. Uh, Board of Commissioners, please, uh, please weigh in. I would love to hear some of your thoughts today. Any thoughts? Yes, Ma'am Chair. Yes, Ma yes, I can hear you. All right. Of course, I'll go first. Oh. All right, I'll jump out to you. Um, thank you for giving um, us an opportunity to, to speak on this matter, and I appreciate the citizens for speaking. It's, it's, it's been quite some time since we heard from you. Um, obviously. Um, it's been about four months um, in, in a direct in these open meetings. I, I always appreciate, uh, obviously, the First Amendment and the capacity to be able to speak. Um, uh, but I'm going I'm going to get right at this. This is not a a, a dancing moment. Um, we, we, I mean, if you listen to the spirits of the words that were said, it, it's some of them, um, you know, it's the past and it's it's representative and it's symbolic. But racism still exists. Racism is still systemic. Racism is veiled in the First Amendment and words and um, it, no, it's active, right? It, it, it's active. Uh, the, 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 it, it's, it's a, uh, they're putting a focus on these statues to dog whisper and to wake up those who, who, who still can hear it. It's active, right? And, and we, we can step over it uh, or we can take action. I'm, I'm not going to go long on this one because um, I, I if, if, if I heard my citizens and it's about listening to the youth, don't don't marginalize the youth. Like, you know, how, how, how can we um, pass from one era? And I can only speak to my position because but because my black life matters. Um, it, it, it matters holistically. Right. Let's be clear. So for me, um, for district two, that's all I can speak to. Um, I, I believe action should be taken. Um, I will heed Madam Chair's suggestion of taking it back to you directly, but I'm already clear because I've heard from you guys that it, it, it should be some action should be taken, but it's, it's being left up to the Board of Commissioners, which they hired us to do is, is make the call and uh, whatever we choose to do, it will be on us. So uh, again, we're only going to speak from District 2, but this this is um, it, it, it's active. Um, I, I some of the suggestions. Um, if you ask me what my position would be, it would be to send it to um, a properly lifted up over at the cemetery, um, only because of what it stands for, just like with the National um, Cemetery up in, in Arlington, Virginia, or Washington, D.C., uh, there's a, a proper place. But, okay, I, I, I get that. Um, I'm not suggesting a path for it yet, because I do want to see what you've received, Madam Chair, properly and um, um, publicly. The second part is, um, when you think about um, if no action is taken, I, I think you can't forget what this stands for. Um, so if I can't conceal it, if I can't remove it, if I can't replace it, well, let's put a plaque, let's put something symbolically in front of it to say, okay, let me tell you what the thing is really about. It, because it, it, it's subtle. It, it's both sides. There's some that's like, look, I don't get it. I, I get it. I want to move on. But some are sort of like, because to, to no. Call it for what it is. There is it, there's an invisible force, uh, as I told you. There is, um, a, a, you know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rulers. Leave it at that, right? In high places, like no, it's symbolic to separate. It, it's just a, a reminder of like, and, and I don't I don't want to use this as the moment to go there. Um, it, it's like no, but there's a way to do this decently in order. I think we should take it back and come forth. I'd like to see the resolution, Madam Chair, um, that you've placed in, in essence. And Madam Carthy, you know, I stand with you and whatever you need as far as feedback and how to work this, this legislative process. But um, 
Um, I'm going to put that to the side. Second point is um, the name change. Uh, I, I think being in our 150th anniversary, it's time. To, it is time to move forward to a new. Uh, I would be open to um, taking up uh, a name change in Douglas County. Uh, this is something that has been talked about, um, and, and somebody made something about writing, rewriting history. And I, I find it interesting how, uh, with, through the First Amendment, how uh, we, we put stuff out there and then we erase it, pretend like it didn't happen. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right? We, we put things out there and we mark them in history in, in an active sense, but we don't. Uh, and I, I, I think that's the part that you, you got to look it right in the face. Right? You got to stand up against that. Right? And it's, it's constant movement. What you can do, what you can't do, it's always about control. And you can buy into it. The devil is a lie. It, it, it becomes a, you know, it, it is what it is. Racism is is, is that a spirit. And, it, and yielding to that spirit um, puts us in the place of, I'm okay with differences. I'm, I'm good. I'm very secure in myself. I, I get affirmation from within my own love for my family. I, I You know, so it, it's okay. I like different. I like diversity. It's like you learn a lot. You're like, well, that's interesting. Right. So it's not all about me It's making room for others. And so I have no problem with that. But there was a call to action. And I said it's a comment. Maybe it was just the fact that I hadn't heard from them in a while and just hearing them. It, it hit my spirit. But this is one where I do believe that their action can be taken uh, and should be taken. It's just a question of how will we take action? But I think it's to your point, Madam Chair, you can't make it right here in this moment. But um, thank you for giving me a couple more minutes to go a little bit long. It's been a while, but I'm going to yield the floor on that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? Thank you so much, Mr. Robinson. Any other comments? All right, uh, Lisa, if you could, and, and board of commission. Oh, Commissioner Mitchell, I thought yeah, I heard yeah, of yeah. Okay. I, and I'll and I'll, I'll be brief, and and I'll just hold all my comments maybe until tomorrow. I'm assuming we're probably going to hear some of this again tomorrow as well. But I guess my first comment would be: Is there a reason no, as to why we didn't why comment, or why we didn't open the floor, or why we didn't say anything at the top of the meeting when these guys had these conversations going on, and were those all done? That would be my first question. Uh, I, I just kind of felt like we we pushed it all the way to the end, and here we are now trying to make comments about what was stated earlier, when the time and the moment was then. As uh, Vice Chair Robinson stated, my stance would be, as stated, we got to think about all the people versus a section or a small segment of those. Out of respect, this monument needs to be removed. It needs to be placed in its proper place. Um, and I'm not going to say much more than just that, that we got to take a, a hard stance. We can't, we, we got to stop worrying about um, what the legal side of it may or may not be. Uh, that's why we got Ken. Uh, that's why we got our state legislators and others. Uh, but if nothing is done, or we, or our silence, or we silence ourselves, I think that's going to create that divide and conquer move that's going to hurt us more than help us. So uh, this is just a small step, guys, as was stated by some of the citizens earlier. Uh, but this is um, this is the time. And this is the time for all of us as Douglas Countyans to come together and, and do the right thing. And I'll leave it at that and I'll make my further comments tomorrow. I yield. Okay. Please note, uh, Commissioner Mitchell, certainly there would be no action taken on this item tomorrow. This again, we just I'm trying to give you all uh, all our commissioners time to to weigh in and, and we chat about it. And also uh, Commissioner Carthen, I see you and then after that, Commissioner uh, and Attorney Bernard, weigh in a little bit. I believe Commissioner Mitchell mentioned law, and he said he'd leave that up to you. And I just, you can talk about that later, but I'll yield to Commissioner Carthen. Commissioner Carthen. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry for that. I don't know what's going on, but our internet is in and up and down, so I'm not sure uh, what what has been said. But, however, uh, I did. we did receive a email from you, uh, Chairman Jones, regarding the resolution. Is that resolution, has that resolution been crafted? Is now exiting. At, 
I can't hear you. And it could be my. Uh, you're on mute, Madam Chair. Okay, I'll, okay, I'm off now. Okay. Yes, Commissioner Proth, and it has. It's just a, a certainly a draft, and I uh, was gonna. Uh, I have it with me today. Can read it. And then, of course, uh, we'll do that. I was just trying to allow each commissioner to chime in. Again, no action is required, giving all of us an opportunity to look at all the facts. Facts, that's very important. And certainly, me, who just talked, shared my life story, uh, I'm at the forefront, and I believe that the, the monument should be moved. But, uh, at, of course, we want to do everything decent and in, in order. Um, certainly, so you're not hearing any negative feedback from me because I just shared my story with the entire world. So with that being said, Commissioner, do you have anything else? I'm so sorry to interrupt you. No, no problem. No. I just, I didn't want to uh, just, preempt your resolution. I didn't see a resolution and I had crafted one. Uh, but of course, if you want to get on board and we want to work in decency and in order, as you say, uh, the other thing that I just wanted to point out is that there are a lot of, um, Feedback. Is that me or is it? I want you, what I'm gonna do is turn my mic off. Uh, is your phone near you at all, Commissioner? If your phone is by you, that's probably causing the feedback. You have okay. You, okay. So now try. So, mm -hmm. okay. so yes, so there has been uh, a, a lot of a emails lot of that have gone on gone between on. both sides, those who oppose it and those who are for the the removal of the monument and those who oppose it. Uh, and with the email that I received from you in regards to the Sons of the Confederacy, uh, they actually have a good point and they asked the commission to put up a security camera, quote unquote, to secure, to make sure that that statue was not, uh, in their words, harmed by felons. Uh, and uh, and they have a point, you know, that that statute uh, should not be harmed. It should not be defaced. Uh, however, I don't think we should put up security cameras for that. I think that it should just be removed to a proper place where it, you know, where its resemblance and where its history uh, can be uh, reverenced by those who want to reverence it. Uh, us trying to protect that monument is is really, you know, beyond us. To, to spend more money to to try and protect it. I think the best way to protect it is to move it to a proper place where uh, it can be protected and, and on the grounds that um, others would respect it and would respect its prominence. Uh, but I look forward to the resolution that you have brought forward. I look forward to us uh, taking steps to remove it. And uh, with that, Madam Chair, I yield. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. I certainly have had uh, a dialogue with our state delegation here in Douglas County regarding the monument because it is at a Georgia legislative level. Uh, certainly, uh, I was assured, uh, certainly when I've talked about just the direct removal today without any, uh, certainly, conference with the state, uh, uh, the I was assured that the Georgia legislature make laws, and why would myself as a commission chairman break laws. So certainly that allowed me to pause and certainly do some research and make sure that everything was, is being done decent and in order. This certainly is a draft resolution. I'll just read it off briefly, but I just want to let you know each commissioner has received a letter. It's on your desk. Those letters came in on Wednesday. Dion uh, notified me that the letter, so the Confederate son sent all of us a letter. Uh, I just happened, Mayor Robinson called me on uh, Friday and asked me, did I have my letter yet? And I said, what letter? And then she sent me a copy of what was sent to her. And then, but uh, Dion did notify me that all the commissioners, we have our letters on our desk from the Confederate uh, sign. So I encourage mm -hmm. our each board of commissioners to read those. Again, this is certainly a first read. This is nothing for action tomorrow. Again, we're still massaging. And again, like I said, we want to make sure we do everything decent in order. We have the opportunity to set the standard and at the same time remove a mon monument with dignity and grace and, and, and honor. Whereas on May 5th, I'll, I'll stop the resolution, Board of Commissioners. Whereas on May 5th, 1914, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners granted permission to the Douglasville chapter of the du uh, United da Daughters of the Confederacy to erect a monument of a Confederate soldier here in after the monument on the courthouse square of Douglas County. 
And whereas the monument was subsequently moved to the new courthouse, and whereas civil unrest across the nation over Confederate monuments and memorials has escalated and has been the focus of campaigns for removal, and whereas the monument is listed among Confederate monuments and memorials in Georgia that were established as public displays and symbols of the Confederate States of America, and whereas as part of the nationwide mandate for racial justice, there is a debate over the displaying over uh, displaying of Confederate monuments and memorials. And whereas diverse communities have argued that allowing the Confederate monument and memorials to continue being displayed causes division because they are considered by some to be controversial symbols. And whereas OCGA 50-3 uh, prohibits the relocation, removal, concealment, obscuring, or uh, alteration in any fashion of publicly owned monuments or memorials dedicated to military service or past or present military personnel of the United States of America or the Confederate States of, of America. And whereas Georgia Senate Bill 77 signed into law on April 26, 2019, provided government monuments and commemorative symbols with even more protection. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Douglas County Board of Commissioners shall continue to work towards ending discrimination within the confines of Georgia state law while advocating for home rule authority, allowing local governments to exercise decisions on such matters. And then, you know, of course, the last part is passed and adopted. So that is, is, is based on deep research, things that I can do, the walls that I hit in the midst of researching. I spend a voluminous amount of time, uh, Board of Commissioners, because my instinct and gut is to do what the citizens ask today to bring it down. But of course, we want to be a county that does things uh, decent and in order. Uh, of course, uh, the citizens uh, would certainly uh, absorb a, a nice lawsuit. Uh, DeKalb County, I believe, is the only of all the uh, municipalities that uh, uh, did something, that did it in the right way. They had a superior court judge ordered because it was be the, the actual um, monument was being defaced. But the other counties are, uh, is my understanding, are facing a lawsuit. So I'm asking uh, this, this, this uh, resolution is uh, to certainly uh, petition our state legislation to, 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 to give consideration to uh, the local governments for home rule to allow us to make our decisions. I'm not speaking for everybody in the whole world. I'm asking them to, for us home rule for Douglas County and also all local governments so we can make our decision. And that's something that I believe that our, our delegation would, would be willing to run up the food chain for me. I know that uh, the 24 uh, this year, the 2020, uh, the session has closed and I agree. I, I agree wholeheartedly with all the statements today, but I have uh, got a commitment and I've sent all the delegation for Douglas County. They received a letter of, of concern when uh, West Metro NAACP sent me a, an initial letter before I responded back. I shared all that information with our state delegation. And then also, uh, last but not least, our state delegation uh, is, uh, uh, it's, they have received this information and uh, I believe they will take action to help us get this across the line. With that being said, Board of Commissioners, I certainly, again, there's no action needed on this. This is just a first read resolution like uh, is done in the Congress. Uh, nothing, no action taken. Please, uh, Lisa will provide you with all the documents, this, this actual resolution. We will give you the resolution that was uh, written in 1998 that you may not be aware of. The monument is sitting in an area. I've learned a lot about that monument. The monument uh, is sitting on, uh, Ms. Glover, uh, it's a park right out there where the monument is sitting. A park was established in 1998. So it's Glover's Park. We'll give you that information. We have the document from 1914 from the actual commission chairman who signed off to giving the Confederate uh, uh, daughters permission to place the uh, the uh, monument on public property. And we have all the information. And then you have my resolution uh, and then I certainly give you time to look in, talk to your, your constituents, and then we'll, I want to revisit this, uh, this topic again. Certainly the goal is not to circumvent anything. I just read my history. I'm never scared. So if that's the impression, I've got the battle scars to prove it, that I've been through it and done it. But again, we, I believe Douglas County want to go as a county.
that does things in decent and in order. And I'm not the first voice that says uh, has said this. I echo the words of some of my uh, legis state legislators, not all of them, but they said, Chairman, you, you definitely want to do it the right way. So, Board of Commissioners, uh, I certainly, uh, that's that's all I have, but uh, uh, I just ask that our Attorney Bernard, if you could, uh, Attorney Bernard, just if you could speak a little more about some of these, the laws that certainly I had an opportunity to become a legal beagle, and if you could just chime in as well, and then we'll move on, and I'll call for an executive session. Madam Chairman, Madam I'll, Chairman I'll defer some I'll defer comment some to comment. the executive session in light of, in the light of litigation. litigation. Madam Chair, you might want to talk future. Okay. okay. Uh, I'll defer some of my comments in light of threat of litigation until executive session. But I will say a summary of OCGA 50 and the history provided in the resolution. We were asked to back, back it. Back it. Can, can, can. Hold on a second. Can we get everybody? Can we get everybody to mute their phone? I'm not, not, not going to mute their. Uh, computers or something because this is not going to work. So mute your computers, please. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you can go ahead. Is this any better? Is that a better? Whole lot, a whole lot better. A whole lot better. Thank you all. Well, listen, first of all, I will say that I will defer some comments to executive session in light of the threat of litigation. Having said that, I will echo what the chairman has said about the uh, what has happened in the law under 50-3-1, including the passage last year of legislation that was signed into law. Uh, the chairman asked us to do an extensive history lesson, and she has done an independent one. We have confirmed the facts that she's told you all today about the park, uh, about the history of since 1914 uh, and related matters. And we've also done our archival search in the county records at multiple levels, realizing there was a fire of the courthouse that existed in the 50s. So we don't know what's missing from that, but I think Madam Chair has stated the law correctly, uh, and I'll defer my comments if you don't mind to executive session where it would be more appropriate at that time. Okay, thank you so much, Attorney Bernard. Okay, Board of Commissioners, are there any other comments before we move on? Commissioner, I just, I just, okay, uh, Commissioner Mitchell. So, Ken, quick question. So, you, we're going to take, you're saying a resolution into executive session. I'm just a little baffled by that. Uh, I'm not taking I'm the not executive not session in the executive resolution session. executive session. So I'm going to comment I'm about the threatened about litigation in executive session and will not give privileged material over an open line without the, uh, and outside the board's ears. Got you. So the you got chair knows that we can't discuss the resolution in executive session. Oh, I just, okay, that's the part I want to make sure that we clear up. Okay. All right, I yield back. Okay, if all hearts and minds are clear, we're going to move on board. Uh, board of Commissioners, again, there's no action to be taken today or tomorrow. Certainly want to give you time to research yourself and look at the information, and then we can uh, certainly meet again and chat and, and come up with a, a pathway forward. But today, again, those laws are very restrictive, but we can talk past those. So let's, let's uh, of course, I want to, uh, at this time, ask Attorney Bernard, do we need to go into executive session? Madam Chair, you Madam need Chair, executive Chair, session. Chair. We have action. Okay. okay. Madam Chair? Madam Chair, we, mm -hmm. we have an executive session have, for legal personnel and uh, real estate. Okay, thank you so much. Board of Commissioners, we have an uh, executive session that's been requested by attorney. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. I, I, just, I just, again, clarify yeah. the commission mission. Attorney, Attorney. Right. Right. Can you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys mute your phone, mute, mute something, because I, I cannot hear Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah. Real quick, uh, I just want to acknowledge the fact that we're not going into executive session to discuss that resolution, which obviously um, it, 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 it's not a proper path of discussion. There may be elements from a litigation we're going to talk about, but Madam Chair, I just want to establish the point of record that you have presented a resolution of first reading. It's my understanding that um, there is a counter 
um, uh, resolution um, with Madam Carthen that I'm going to join her in co-authoring a response. And out of that, uh, with obviously guidance for Commissioner Mitchell, who's done a great job of passing legislation up at the state level and how to guide us through this process, there is a path forward um, in being able to do that. So I think what people are asking for is that, okay, we heard a lot. What does that mean? Our goal is to take action, but we will do it decently in order. But as far as who's going to do what, I want to put that for record as well. So with that, that was my discussion item. I yield the floor, Madam Chair. You got a motion and a second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Thank you so much, Vice Chairman Robinson. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, when I call your name, please indicate your response. Uh, uh, Commissioner of District 1, Henry Mitchell III. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Excuse me one second. This is uh, uh, County Administrator Mark Hill. So, uh -huh. ain't no drop off the line because uh, internet uh, issues, but I have her on the okay, phone. Hold on, 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 hold on. Could we get you guys from now you? Your computer, so we can hear what Mark is saying. Thanks. Yeah, so Madam Chair, Commissioner Carthen dropped off the line because of internet issues no. in her area. So she, I mean, got her. I'm sorry. So, Commissioner, I have Commissioner Guider on speaker, and she wanted to say something. Well, Madam Chair? Motion in a second. Yeah, we have. Okay, uh, can you hear me now? Okay, we had a motion and a second on the floor. Certainly there was opportunity for discussion. So uh, 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 Commissioner Guider, please speak, and then we're gonna move on. Yes, to 
to remove it or move it uh, in a Confederate um, cemetery? Or why not put a Union soldier up there and put that 620,000 people died in that war to, and like I said, part of it was to end slavery, to end the slavery, but it was also economic. Uh, the high tariff that was put on the South by the Northern industrialists. So uh, there's, um, we don't want whatever we do, whatever we do, we do not want to divide our community. Uh, and if we just blatantly take uh, uh, the few that we're, we're speaking and, and say, let's just, do this or that and the other, you're going to alienate half of your community. And we, it'll take years for us to come back together. If we love this community like I do, we will do, we will take steps to try not to alienate half of the community. So, and what, I've never heard this about Bill R. Where does the line end? Where, where is it going to end? Are we going to have to rename everything and every uh, momentum of the uh, momentum of the um, South? You're not going to do that. You're going to have a darn civil war again. We fought a war where over 600,000 men and boys, a lot of boys, lost their lives on both sides, okay? Isn't that enough price for that? But what we need to do is try to move forward, try to not alienate every half of the people. But I, I, like I say, I haven't seen the uh, resolution, but evidently everybody else in Douglas County has. So I, I, I take issue with that that it was not passed around to everybody. But when everybody's saying so-and-so wrote a resolution, which shouldn't we have seen it before now? But I'm just saying we need to put some thought into this. I suggest we sit in the room and talk to each other and try to come up with some kind of solution that's not going to divide the community. Because if it's divided now, it's going to be divided for a long time. And I don't want it on my, my hands. Yeah. And so let's, think, let's meet. Don't rush into doing something. This organization or that organization says you must do. We don't have to do anything. This is our county. And we need to speak up for all the people. Not just they select you. Now, you know good and well that our school systems has not done justice to our history. They're changing it constantly. Uh, some people think the Holocaust never happened. Mm -hmm. And so we need to see exactly what we want to do going forward to unite our community. Otherwise, we don't give a darn about our community. If we want to divide our community, we don't care about our community. Now, what's been done in the past, I tell you, I saw the, the water fountains, I saw the buses, I saw all of that, but I don't think that way anymore. I was just a kid back then. And there's a lot of things that have moved forward, and a lot of progress has been done. My goodness, we've come a long way. Do you know that up to the 20th century, they could beat, men could beat their wives? Well, are we going to condemn every man around here? You got to, you got to think through this and don't rush. So I just plead with the board, let's go forward to unite this community and not let it be divided by organizations that's trying to dictate to us what we need to do out here. And with that, I yield back. Madam Chair. Mm. Yes, uh, Commissioner Carthen. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner Guider and uh, Commissioner Carthen. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
Uh, just to answer Commissioner Goddard, uh, no one has seen a resolution. It was not passed around to the community. So I'm not sure if you heard beforehand once I heard that or saw the email from Chairman Jones that she was bringing forth a resolution, I decided not to submit my resolution. So just want to allay your fears that no one has seen a resolution from Commissioner Carthen in the community. But yes, there was talk of me doing a resolution because I was asked to do a resolution and I wanted to bring one forth in removal of that. Uh, there are two sides to every uh, issue. There's for and against. And I agree with Chairman Jones that we should do things in decency and in order uh, not to alienate anybody's history. So, um, but I thank you for wanting to see that resolution and uh, we're going to move forth with the resolution that Chairman Jones has um, put forth and we can amend and, and talk about it and, and do what we need to do in order to ensure that the voices of the constituents that were on this call this morning and those who may be on the call tomorrow are heard. With that, Madam Chair, I yield. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Carthen. And uh, thank you again, thank Commissioner Guider. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, internet went down out here. Did you read resolution? Because I, I have not seen that either. Oh, yes, yes. Resolution are we I did. About? I just read it. Do you, I'm going to have Lisa send copies to each commissioner. Certainly, there's no action required today, but I heard Commissioner Carthen said she wanted to move forward with it. I want you to look at it. You typically, you know, with our resolutions, Board of Commissioners, you, you have it and you have an opportunity to look at it. I read it. I will be more than happy to read it again if, uh, for your ears. Do you need me to read it again, Commissioner? No, I, I just object that we did, were not given the resolution beforehand. Why are we waiting for the last minute to do what well, drop this on everybody? Let me tell you why. Certainly wanted to share with you about the history and the research that I've done. This resolution is, again, just appealing for the local governments to have decision-making powers in the future. We realize that the, the state, there are laws that are governing, uh, governing the removal of monuments in the state of Georgia. I talked about us being doing things decent in, in order in Douglas County. I believe you are premature a little bit, but about taking action. I agree with you. I serve as the chairman of this county. I serve all the citizens and I have a deep regard for everyone. So I'm just, I just want to uh, just keep everything in the fair way with you and just before you react and say they're changing, we're not doing anything. You, I can read the resolution again. Lisa's going to send copies. Again, this is something after my in, uh, deep uh, research, trying to make sure I got all the facts together because I definitely would not want us to approve a resolution without the facts. Uh, certainly, we have documents coming to you this evening to allow you to look at it. And certainly, if you feel there's a rush, I can certainly uh, put this resolution off until our next meeting, but I need to hear from you. Well, I think any resolution should be um, shared um, with the board and the public. Well, it's, it's to give them, to give them the opportunities to speak on it. But, uh, I said, I, in meeting, but we haven't seen I said I will be bringing forth a resolution. Let me, I, let me and, just say and, I haven't. Yeah. So. Okay. I, I said I would be bringing yeah. one forth. You have a copy. Lisa, if you could just send each one of the commissioners a copy. I would, we were going to get you a hard copy, send it to you. We're working on that now. You will have it in your, in your uh, box, uh, Commissioner. We can certainly talk about it. The resolution, or t these resolutions, are not typically sent typically sent out to the public to read. I set up a resolution the other day for face coverings, and it was done. And I read it on the whim, and we voted on it. So again, that is not true about resolutions in this county. And I'm just I'm not going to sit here and allow that uh, negative messaging to get out to our citizens. I will send the resolution. It was put on the agenda, and it was included. In yeah, the reason why it was not, I wanted to discuss it with us, Commissioner. Didn't want to discuss it in an executive session. 
this again, no action required, no action required. I'm going to send it to you. Certainly, we don't have to move forward tomorrow. Just please, I ask my commissioners to take all the documents that I've collected and all the facts that I found. Read it. Let's discuss it. And we'll discuss it briefly tomorrow. But no, we, there will be no action taken in terms of a vote. And then my next meet, my first meeting in August, we will move forward with the vote on this resolution. Okay? Okay. Okay, we'll move forward. Uh, Board of Commissioners, let's do this. We're going to, uh, we were in the middle. We have a motion and a second. When I call your name, if you say yes for the uh, um, uh, executive session, we'll move forward. Commissioner uh, District 1, Henry Mitchell III for the yeah. executive session. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Commissioner yeah. Um, District 2, Kelly Robinson and Vice Chairman. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, District 3, Commissioner uh, Tarini Carthen. Yes. Yeah. District 4, Commissioner Ann Dones Guider. Yes. 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 Okay. And Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman of the Board of Commissioners, answers yes. We have a five-zero unanimous vote, and the motion carries. Okay. We're gonna. Uh, I, I assume, Mark, you want us to cl click off, and then you'll call us back. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Keep your okay. MS teams open. Okay. Uh, Board of Commissioners, uh, and also the citizens of Douglas County, we will be back. Uh, the Board of Commissioners will be back momentarily. We are headed to our executive session. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, TJ. Um, certainly to the citizens of Douglas County, we appreciate your patience and understanding as we uh, certainly just uh, wrapped up our executive session. And uh, certainly, Board of Commissioners, not sure if you have any individual announcements before we wrap up our meeting for today. So, Board of Commissioners, sound like we are good. Uh, we had a very good, hearty meeting today, and certainly we have a lot of, uh, I call it some to-dos to look forward to, and certainly you have, uh, certainly I've provided you with some homework regarding our monuments. Um, next, I want to just share it uh, with the citizens because I certainly don't want to take our eye off the uh, needle right now regarding the coronavirus pandemic is still uh, in full uh, force. Uh, the uh, we have an educational campaign in play. The Board of Commissioners have launched an educational campaign. Uh, we have a PSA that is airing on 46 channels in Douglas County. Citizens, you will see billboards up. You see flashing uh, variable message boards coming off the interstates. And also, you receive letters and you will continue to see uh, flyers and you will con uh, uh, continue to see uh, receive a sequel of flyers as this uh, moment uh, uh, remains present in our life. I just wanted to encourage all our citizens to continue to focus on the three W's and they are wash your hands. We want you, we highly recommend and encourage you to wash your hands. We highly recommend and encourage you to wear masks when in public settings. And then also, last but not least, please watch your social distancing. Again, uh, thank you, citizens of Douglas County and the Board of Commissioners for engaging in this uh, work session today. And with that being said, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.